Okay. I wasn't sure if I was in. I'm just on my iPad now. I, I missed all that, so I can't wait to hear it again. All right. Well, then, then Martin, you go. Um, hold on one second. I just want to... Okay, it's recording. All right, Martin. Pick a rectangle, any rectangle. What on the left? Man, why does everyone pick that one second? Interesting. <laughs> I, love, I love patterns, and I, I always wonder why psychologically people do what they do. All right, so start on the one on the left. Uh, where's our dominant contrast, dominant vertical, dominant horizontal? Let's start with those three basic ones. But with you, it's going to be a little more difficult because of this. You're not allowed to go through, okay? You have to choose. Here's a vertical. And here's a vertical. Here's a horizontal. Here's a horizontal. You have to now choose out of those options, which is your dominant. All right. So I have the DC there. Let's see my dominant vertical. Dominant. All right, you're going all the way across. You can't do that. Oh. <laughs> but I like I do like the straight edge of that that arrow tool. Yeah, that that's cool. Right? Oh. Um, that's horizontal. Mm-hmm. Vertical. Really? Uh, in, the land of, in the land of midgets, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's slow. There we go. There. And so now we got four. So how would you then do your arabesque? Let's see. You don't you don't need to write them. We 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 got it. Um, how would you do your arabesque? Your dominant arabesque. Actually. Would everybody agree with that, Dominant Arabesque? I I would have come from the lower right corner this and swoop it up, cross through. No, cross. I, am I allowed to swoop it up, break swoop through it. the main horizon line, yep. and then come around? Would everybody agree with that? Yeah. Would everybody agree with that one? Yeah, that's how I, I, I would see it there, Donna. Well, you know what? I just got lucky because um, this this kind of stuff escapes me. But you demonstrated that just a few minutes ago, and then I saw it again. That's called learning. So explain <laughs> to me why why they are not from the lower left corner. Um, maybe the same kind of curve. <coughs> like that? It doesn't flow. It doesn't. <laughs> It, yeah. it, no matter, unless you make the lines go that way, there's no, um, it, it doesn't have, it doesn't make sense. Poetry. It doesn't have poetry. It, 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 Victor said it perfectly before when he said um, the least resistance. Yeah. It's just like your brain wants to go from that, in my opinion, that lower corner, and it wants to move up that broad area. And then you, you, you tighten in and come around to the point of interest, which is your dominant contrast where the other lines are leading to. Yeah. So, you're, so in my opinion, you're almost going from the uh, broadest in general to the most like exact thought. 
What do you think? Yep. And that's ultimately where that Nautilus concept comes, where you have the golden section rectangle, oh, the square, and then you have the square, and then you have the square, then you have the square. It's called the, uh, the rectangle of the whirling squares because you're going from this square to this square, which is a large, and you're coming in through here, and you can actually break it up then in, into straight lines oh. if you want. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's the same principle. It doesn't matter where you put that one dot. Um, in this case, we're dealing with one dot, so your eye is still moving in that same principle. Now, it gets a lot, conf a lot more confusing when you start putting marks in here because now, now you're adding in more information. And that's why we have to be very, very intentional about every mark and every line that we put into our image so that it communicates our idea. So we can, like I said before, make, make the curve this way, but then we have to design it to do that. And, um, because but actually naturally it is by it's itself. Yeah. It's that. Exactly. And so this is the difference between like, the reason why this is important, a practice like this, <coughs> not where you're trying to tell it, dictate it. So when you're at a museum and you're looking at a work, you can ask, what is, what is the thrust map of, the, of that piece? What is it telling me? What is it? What, what is it? Hold on one second. Guy. All right, we're warriors of the arts. We're gonna make it through, damn it! No. Okay. Um. <laughs> <sighs> Sacrifices we make for love. Okay. Um. So. Uh, who was on my list? Who was next? Um, oh, yeah, Cheryl. You're going to do the uh -huh. next one. Pick any rectangle except the one on the left of the bottom. Any one besides those two. <laughs> well, okay, then. How about the top right? Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Everybody picks the top right for the third one. Um, so where would your arabesque be? I imagine... The, from the upper, upper right down to the lower left. Can you draw on it? Use your annotation I'm tools? Trying, I'm trying to find a drawing <laughs> tool and I can't find it on here. All right. Um, my, are you on your laptop or your computer? I'm on my uh, iPad. So I've got everything else, but I can't. I have a little. Let's see, does this, I'm that not sure. I, I don't know if on the iPad you oh, can here annotate. We go, here we go. Hold on. Okay, cool. Ooh. Victor? V Victor, dear? Yes. Um, I see a little longer arabesque coming from the lower right, bouncing up towards the top and then coming down. Um, is that legitimate? I really don't know. Um, you can't draw it, can you? No, I but can. Cheryl, can you give it a shot? I can. Yes. You want like this. <laughs> yeah, but cut, and then coming down, you know, and it's like a little longer line. It, it kind of encompasses the entire space. Mm hmm Is that what you were thinking too, Cheryl? Me? Yeah. Uh, no. You were, I, well, I know the first time you were thinking. I think, the, Susan, I think Susan was saying something. Yeah, I, I was um, just doing the annotation, what I believe um, Donna wanted. Yeah, thank you, Susan. And, and Cheryl, you were coming the other way, which was um, much more on the curve. Uh, I mean, uh, not the curve. This is a very interesting thing. See, to me, what you're, what's happening in your mind is you're relating to the straight line versus the curve. Which, which flows much more, uh, which flows in line, uh, which comes in, uh, what am I trying to say? Which is much more like your personality, right? So like it was funny when I had Michelle and I had uh, Charlene in my studio, Michelle was very angular. She would, she would say the same uh, thing you just said. 
uh, Charlene Are you talking to me. Yeah, and okay. Charlene would 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 have. Have flowed the way that most of the other people are flowing because they're seeing a curve. So, if you're looking at that diagonal, then you're going to say, "Oh, yeah, that makes sense. The curve is here," because you're really not looking at the curve. You're looking. You're you're, you're looking really more at the diagonal. <coughs> well, I didn't know. I I wasn't even thinking of a diagonal, so it was all subconscious for me. Also, um, if you start up here then that would probably make a little more sense where it would, it would flow closer. Like you're just going to that point. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, but even with that, you're still thinking as a done diagonal where it's like, okay, I'm starting here. I want to get here. How, what's the quick, you know, quickest way. And now I'm just bending that, that, that diagonal versus how do I flow around it? If you're going to flow around it, well, then you're going to go this way. Okay. Um, Generally speaking, Victor, this is Karen. Yes. Um, is the arabesque in intention trying to lead your eye through the entire uh, composition? At this stage, yes. When it's just this one point, and you, you, you can feel... You can feel this um, diagram happening, right? So you're then going to connect from that big, big one to the second biggest one, and then you're going to come across here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, is that, is, Victor? You know, I really get that this when you do this thing, and, and the earlier one with the golden uh, mean, and you were, what did you call it? The spiraling. Yeah, the whirling squares. The whirling squares. I, I, that I get that concept. So that's helpful to me if I think of that shape, almost like a nautilus, mm -hmm. getting to the focal point. Is, is does that make sense? To you absolutely, absolutely. If I think of it that way. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Okay. And and it works on this again. If we're trying to. <clears throat> you know, keep your eye up here and then everything down here is verticals and horizontals. Well, then that, then this doesn't work, right? But the reason why it doesn't work is we've changed it. It's just not a dot inside of a rectangle. We have all kinds of different information. Mm -hmm. um, and so but what I w really want you to understand is that if you just put one dot in an image, okay, so let me get here real quick. Every mark, it tells a story. Uh, let me see if I can get here. And if I change that, that changes that design, right? And so we just have to look at it at, at this really basic, basic level, to understand the principles. <coughs> so let me um, bring in the Sargent painting. Uh, and then let's take a look at some of that. Do you guys see her? Mm -hmm. And I can see that arabesque. I've always loved that painting. You're going to love it more after I get done with it. <laughs> yeah. And actually, you know what? You know what, uh, Cheryl, so funny is... um. I'm having a little struggle finding the arabesque. I mean, I see the main diagonal. I see the dominant contrast. I see a dominant horizon. Um, I get a little confused about the dominant vertical. It, it could go right through the head. And I get, a, I get a little confused about the dominant arabesque. So I'm eager to hear what Victor has to say. Uh, I'll be honest. The arabesque is always, always the, the trickiest one for me. Um, because when these guys drew, they drew in straight lines. When you start gritting, gritting uh, straight lines is how you need to work. When you want to try to convey something in three dimensions that has volume, the best way to do it on paper is to do it in straight lines. Even though in nature there are no straight lines. There are no straight lines in nature. But when you translate that world out there into our paper, 
the, the best way to do it is through a straight line. So when you start looking at these guys' works, even if it's a curve, they might put a curve in there, but a lot of times it really is just straight lines that give that illusion. Um, and uh, and so the arabesque a lot of times is, is very hidden and very difficult to find, but you, you just start kind of reverse engineering it in terms of like its echo map and things. Um, so for example, with the arabesque, you can see there's a curve here. Hold on. You can see that curve. And then you just start following it, okay? And then you start to say, oh, look it, it's repeating here and here and here and here. So you know now it's moving up. And then you just follow it. Oh, look, it goes right through there and comes up around through the head, right? And you can kind of feel it right here. It's being repeated, it's being repeated, okay? So you kind of feel it, and then you look for the information around it. Because this curve on our shoulder is not accidental. He could have designed that shoulder in a thousand different ways. But he didn't. He designed it exactly so it mimics the edge of that chair. So now you have this beautiful, this movement coming through here. And, and the most important part is coming around that head. Um, now, how do we know that's the most important part? Somebody tell me right. where the dominant vertical is. Mm -hmm. Where would you say the dominant vertical is? Now, the dominant vertical isn't necessarily a line. Yeah. You know, you could say this whole, this whole little section, right? Right. I would say the center of the face, but you could just say that whole little section. This, this is a vertical here, but it's not as dominant as that. This is the thrust, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, Connie said last night, so what you're looking really for is the feeling of a direction. That's the thrust. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, as I'm learning to translate this, th these uh, lessons into Portuguese, I'm learning like the word direction is probably a better word to use for instead of the word thrust. But it's really that feeling of a direction, okay? <coughs> so where would your dominant horizontal be? Anybody? The, the chair, the top of the chair. Okay. And more importantly, what, what, where does it go? I mean, like going right across even the chin, it's like from... In my mind, I guess you're right there, Victor. I just, I just kind of feel like the widest line of the widest part of the chair to the widest part of the chair. Now, right. now the question no, no, no. is, yeah. Now the question is, um, is the chair important? Is it, or is there something else more important to this story? Her eyes. Eyes. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going oh. through. Okay. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, I saw that in a Rembrandt picture. It it landed right on the um, daughter line. Mm -hmm. And then wow. the, his hand landed on the bottom daughter. So, hmm. Interesting. Yep. So she was built within. She was yeah. built within inside that space. <clears throat> it was all empty. It was dark. <laughs> but the face was right up here, and then his hand was right here with the knife. And yep. that knife went right on that. Um, on that diagonal. Look at you, Susan. Dang. Somebody's talking like they know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> so with this diagonal, where do you think the diagonal would be? I think it's the, it's the um, well... I think it's the uh, her stash coming up from the bottom up towards her. Yep, up towards her what? Uh, up towards her breast, <laughs> up towards the shoulder, or up pointing towards her face. Yeah, her breasts are, don't exist, um, and the reason her why they don't. Skin. Yeah, they they point up to her face, right? They they they're bringing you back up, and then it, this whole area is thrusting you up to this section. This area. Is thrusting you in here, right? It's there... funny, I posted this picture on my Facebook post, and one of the guys said, "Wow, she she looks like she's up to something. Like she's trouble." Oh, Sula <laughs> Halim, that's yeah. what I want to ask you. So, <laughs> and I said, "Oh my gosh, the artist did it. He landed it. He." But I'm going to show you how he did it because that's exactly what he did, right? So we now we know by looking at this painting. It's her face that we need to focus on. It's, that's the reason why he's a portrait artist, right? 
He's not going to be like, oh, look at her finger. Unless, and I've heard of an artist doing this, he proposed to a woman, he created a portrait of her, and he had the attention going to the ring, and that's how he proposed to her, right? And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so we know that the face is important. Now the question is, is she serious or is she sexy? Which one would you guys say? Oh, sexy. Oh, how dare you speak Oh, yeah. Okay. Just like... Sexy. Yeah. Come on, Karen, which one is it? Say the word. Oh, I said sexy. Oh, she's like, I said it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right, Don Martin. And sexy. Which one would you say, Martin? She's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have That's your mute on? <laughs> okay, so she's sexy and um, not serious. Uh, what was the second question I wanted to ask? Oh, yeah. So we, so we know that it's going through her face and she's, she's radiating like a, a, a sexiness. Well, the question is why? How do we know that? How are we feeling that? And we all agree on it, right? So there's consensus to it. So that means the design must be achieved. It's happening. So anybody take a guess on how he's triggering that in us? I see a couple of things in her body language, mm -hmm. the way she's posturing herself. Um, okay. Her left arm going over the back of the chair and her hooded eyelids in particular. And there's a slight upturn of the right side of her mouth too that kind of gives her a little bit of quirkiness. Indeed. Now, <clears throat> What you just looked at, <clears throat> Karen, is all representation, okay? And what we try to do is not look at representation, but look at design, because that's how we figure it out, right? Now, what we do is once we figure out the design, then you bring in the, the representation on top, because <clears throat> this is not an arm that's drip, drip, you know, this is not an arm that's going uh, on the back of it, a chair, right? This is a curve that's gracefully, playfully moving us up, okay? Mm -hmm. um, notice how this shoulder disappears into the, chair, into the chair, allowing her to kind of twist herself a little bit, right? So mm -hmm. these are the elements that he's using. He's twisting, he's playing with value. Her breasts disappear because her breast her chest, that whole area is all the same value almost. The only difference is that this is a, a cool and this is a warm, right? It's very, very, it's at all, it almost feels like she's naked, right? <laughs> Even though she's dressed. <clears throat> so she's dressed and yet we feel this sensuousness, you know, this, this sensuality from her. Now, where's the highest point of contrast? Her face and hair, her forehead and hair. Her forehead and hair, her eyes maybe? Mm -hmm. I would say her eyes, I would say this area here, right? Yes. Right. Um, and so therefore it's gonna be really her eyes because her hair, you see how dark that is and then that background is so dark? Low contrast, so it's not the top of the hair, so it's going to be in this area. Plus we can then say that the dominant horizontal is going through her eyes. Right? So we know that when we start reading the painting from here, he brings us through her eyes and then we hit a dominant vertical. And we come down to her lips. Now her lips look like they stop there, but they don't because they're in alignment with this part of the chair. Right. <laughs> and when you're drawing it, you would think that he would come back and draw the chair like this, right? But he doesn't, he removes that back of the chair. Why? So that our eye comes in, sees her eyes, and then what happens? She sucks us into her. And she doesn't suck us all the way down into her belly, no. She sucks us right into that smile. Then he puts that little tiny value shift, boom, and then brings us out. And so she's just like, she doesn't let him all the way in, just a little bit. She's teasing, she's playing, she's being funny as they say. She's being coy? Coy, that's the word, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you see how he, he, it's not in the representation, it's in the design that triggers that. If you, oh my God. That's really amazing, Victor. Yeah, that's, 
that was fun when when I figured that one out. That was <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, you won't get a museum lecture like that one. <laughs> no, you won't. Isn't that a shame? Yes. Yes, it is a shame. You know what I love, and I'm just seeing it um, in this rep reproduction. I love the way there's one, two, three, essentially vertical on her, if we're looking at the painting, on her left shoulder, like of the chair. You see how mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. one, two, three? Now, what does that do, Victor? Like here? It just sink? Yeah, but you see the one, two, three of, yes, of course, but you see there's one, two, three where it connects to her. It's like the sheen and the texture or structure of the couch. She's sinking into the couch a little, into the right chair. Here. This spot, this spot. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. The, the one, two, three is... Uh, I don't you know, see very, what you're talking about. Right here. There's you know, oh, 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 oh. Those little marks. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here? It's, it's just... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And that was something that Sargent was known for was going in, putting those little marks, and people would think, oh, look, he's so random and so, 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 not sporadic, but like he was so free in his brush marks. And he was, except for the fact that he did so much planning beforehand that it really, it's like, how free are you? You know what I'm saying? It's like he already knew where everything was so he could have he could have the fun in laying that stroke because he didn't have to figure out what the value was, what the uh, direction was. You know, he didn't have to figure all that stuff out. He did that in the, in the planning stage, in the composition stage. <laughs> so like, you know, that, that famous painting he did with the, uh, with the dance, uh, with the flamingo dancer, right? It took him over a year to do that. And yet people will say, oh, he painted so fast. Victor, uh -huh. I hate to interrupt. I'm just thinking. Um, I think those three um, lines balance the other shoulder. I'm just, I'm just thinking. If you remove those three lines, that big blousey sleeve on the other side would be so heavy. It just balances. What do you think? I, I'm just asking if my analysis makes any sense. Uh, I'm not buying the balancing thing yet. I'm not saying that is okay. true, but I do agree that. It, it, there is something that happens here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there is something that's going on there and maybe it's a balancing. Um, okay. Maybe he just wants to put a mustache on her. I don't know. They got no. Uh, okay. I, maybe I'm getting t too much into the whatever. It's just no, interesting no, no. how those. I, I, I think you need to spend time and analyze it because I think what you're feeling and seeing is important. I just don't know the answer to it. When I, yeah. when I, when I connect the dots, Okay, this is what I see, which is almost like a chair in, in of itself, right? right? Right, right, right. So maybe it's very possible that she was actually originally sitting on a chair like this, looking straight. Mm -hmm. And then he thought, oh, wait, let's twist it this way and then twist it this way. And so now right. she's kind of like, ooh, la, la, you know? She yeah, I, I think you're right. That twisting is such an important uh, energy to this painting. Let me find another painting that an artist does exactly that, um, just so you can see that th this is how these guys thought. You know, they were trying to move your eye to trigger uh, a sense of moving through space. Uh, let me, how do I get the hell out of here? Um, oh, Victor, I have one question about this. Remember how we were just working with the arabesque? Is there a certain arabesque suggested coming from the, let's say, from the lower right corner? and sweeping up and around to her head like a shell. Does that work at all? I'm going to say this, or, Donna. Do you have yes. an annotation? Are you looking at the thing on the computer? Yes. Figure out your annotation tools while I try to figure out this, uh, find this other image, because honestly, it's very hard, especially that I'm a little sick. It's very hard for me to, yeah. to see what you're talking about by, by words. I need, I need to see. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I'll try. Maybe Cheryl or Susan will help me another day. I won't worry today, okay? I don't know where to Is start. Is this what you're talking about? Is that what no, you're talking coming, but coming, just, just coming the reverse. Just coming all the way around, the, like, like a, a shell. Just coming from the lower right and coming, no, lower right, coming yeah, right. all the way around her body, just like that big 
space around the edge of the chair, the far side of the chair, all the way around. This oh. doesn't flow right here. Because like you've that? got this big Yeah, board. yeah, like that. Susan, thank you. Okay. It's just, I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of relating it back to our first exercise, that there's a certain Yeah, um, I see that. Movement. Okay. I see that. You know, uh, one of the things I noticed, I pulled up, up a much bigger image in a book I have here, and it's really interesting. It's like two different chairs, because when you look at this arm and this arm of the chair, and then, Victor, what you were talking about, this, mm -hmm. and I would have never even noticed that. I mean, That's true. If, if I were painting, I would have not had the courage to do that. I agree with you. This is why when people start talking about perspective, I'm just like, think about it. You know, think about it? yeah, I mean, think about it. Who is <laughs> how do I say this? You mean, like, Victor, like, you mean use it? Uh -huh. Use it to your advantage? Use it to your yeah, advantage and I mean, don't it helps you tell your tell your story, but people often say, Oh, you know, you need two point perspective and you need to draw everything in perspective. <laughs> I'm like, no, this is a point. You use a radiating point if it supports your story. Right? Now if you're doing a piece of architecture and you're trying to do that, then yeah, it, it might help or work, but this has nothing to do with drawing it right, you know? A copy. Because this this arm right here won't in perspective right, it's not in the right perspective. This shouldn't be that low this yeah, because, and the reason why is he's not caring about right trying to make it look real he's trying to he's caring about conveying that feeling so in that whoever looks at this person that the, you know this woman's husband walks in and is like hey, that's my wife you know whatever or she looks at it right lady agnew so here's another image um by rubens okay and this was his second i think his second wife isabella um and he does a very similar trick, okay? If you look at the box that forms her head, um, it's tilting in like so, okay? But if you look down here, you can see that it's tilting backwards, okay? If you look at this side of the face, he's, he's, he's basically designing it to tilt in like this, okay? And then this side is tilting in like so. So what is she doing? She's saying yes. She's saying no. She's teasing him. Mm. Like, no, uh-huh. You see how he's playing with this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then that's why she kind of feels a little like, ooh, la, la. That's really interesting, that movement, without realizing it, what it how he created it. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Unless you block off the other side of the face, then you can see those boxes. And but this is designing. So look at this be beautiful Rockwell. Rockwell wants to achieve an effect. What is the effect? That he's looking over the canvas. Well, how does he do it? Well, notice that there's an edge here, right? It's created here. It comes down and it gets pulled back. Notice a high point of contrast on that pipe. Dark contrast, light contrast coming up here, being pulled back. He just pulled the canvas back. Now, how does he make you feel that he's looking up and over? Because he, he designed it to actually make it, actually have him look through it. Well, how does he do that? He comes in here, he draws the line, but the only difference between the canvas and the, the mirror is that this is a cool color, this is a warm color. The values are so close that your eye just basically looks right through the canvas, and he's looking at himself. He basically peeled the canvas back to look over it. And so you have to play with your body language and really feel what, what's happening. How, how, do you, how do you feel that, 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 that extension? Look at, um, to make you feel it, look how long that neck and, and, and shoulder is. That's huge. Really stretching you, right? Yeah. Now, if you come in here and you come up, you realize that I think that's like a, a root two rectangle that he yes. actually designs a portrait inside there. He puts this on one and right there. So he's actually designing a portrait inside of a portrait inside of a portrait, right? So <coughs> he's a genius. Anyways. 
<laughs> Enough of that stuff. Oh, well, was that was that all that different, um, I'm sorry, what was that? Sorry, Karen. What? The Rubens portrait. I just I don't know if it's a question more than a statement, but um, I find it fascinating that it does not come across as a Picasso cubism portrait with how you described it, because we are so intuitively tuned with proportions, you know, that typically if, if one little tiny thing is off, you, you know it right away, even, even if you can't describe why it's off, you know it. Why does the Rubens portrait work? Why, why I'm so sorry. I have three coffee cups from the past couple of days and I grabbed the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> 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 you had a very good point. I forgot to clean my desk <laughs> today. That's great. <laughs> That's recorded too. That <laughs> yeah. Um, because all, all the, uh, um, not all, but part of what the Picasso people did was in their designing process, they just stopped. They didn't go to the, to, to add the context and the representation on top of it. So what you're really looking at a lot of times is the underworking of the compositions and the designs. And so these guys then took it to the next level and cloaked it with pretty faces and clothes. And they just allow, allowed a lot of that design stuff underneath it to be revealed. So you can see a Mondrian in this, in this um, layout over here uh, from uh, Rockwell. Here's a Picasso over here, right? So you can begin, you can see the composition and yet uh, Rockwell's talking about exactly what you're you're talking about. <laughs> you know, here's a, a a Vermeer, I think it is, a Rubin, Durr, Durr, Durr. Right? yeah. Uh, who's this guy? Rembrandt. 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 Okay. Uh, Van Gogh and a Picasso. I think it's Picasso. So here are th here are four self here are four self portraits that he's aligning himself, associating himself with, and yet, what's what's exactly the same about them all? That they're Extremely it's well. The design. Exactly. Now, uh, Victor, uh, what is your thinking in terms of the uh, helmet on the top? Uh, it's it's funny. It's almost like uh, maybe it balances the painting, but it's almost like a crown. Almost like saying, you know, this <laughs> is the royalty. If you could be in that club, what do you think? I think that's probably pretty uh, accurate. You know, you can see this arabesque coming through here, coming right up through that crown. And then he, I, I like the fact that he brings, you know, he's America's favorite painter. Yeah. He put that, you know, and it, it's part of who he is. It starts right down here. You can see this line coming up. Mm. Yeah. And he, and he belongs to the big butt club too, which is cool. Anyway. And he did it on the sinister, which is really kind of cool. <clears throat> this one yeah. is. This this self portrait is because the, the yeah. title of this portrait is what it's called. Three self portraits, right? So this self portrait is. This one is is not. Oh, well, this one I guess you could say is here. But then he has this really strong baroque diagonal over here, which brings yeah. into, into that other one. So it's it's. I mean, it's kind of neat because he's looking at himself, looking at himself while drawing himself, but he's also the painter who's actually painting this, you know, and it just kind of messes with you. And that's probably in a way or way where he brings the Picasso in because the Picasso is trying to see one one image from multiple different sides in time, right? And uh, so, he, you know, he was having a lot of fun. But the whole point I wanted to really share with you is how he's pulling this back so you can see and then you don't have this line in your way. So he gives you the representation, but using design, he can make it disappear. The same way you can feel her shoulders, but yet at the same time, they're not there. You can feel that she, you can see consciously that she has clothes, and yet on a subconscious level, she's basically sitting there with a bare breast, uh, you know, bare chested. She's just very sensual, very comfortable in her own skin. And, um, 
and yet you don't see any skin, and yet you feel it because he reduces the value. So your mind, you know, just triggers something. It makes you feel one thing even though you're seeing something else. All right, guys. Enough of the wonderful world of done. That was beautiful. Of design. <clears throat> Let's get into the show. <clears throat> so, uh, Susan, would you like to go first with your design? I would. Um, can you yes. take screen down? And hopefully I can open something up. <coughs> I'm having... Hmm. Pictures don't want to open up. I'm having a hard time today. It's oh, I know. I'm. You know what? Why don't you go ahead with um, if somebody else is ready? Uh, Cheryl, you ready? Uh, I can try to be. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can. I'll be right back. Hold on. I think I'm going to start uh, introducing uh, an artist once a, uh, each week so we can kind of have um, a look at because I think that's going to help you guys really understand the concepts and how they ultimately work and uh, keep you inspired and get you thinking and things like that. Is that something that you guys that's would wonderful. like? Thank you, Victor. Right. Oh, yeah, Victor. It. That's like, that's gold. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, let me see here. Let's see if I can do it this way. No. Nope. My computer's not working, Don. I can't seem to get my picture to open. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> All right, Can let's you? walk you. Hold, hold on one second, Cheryl. All right, Susan, mm -hmm. is your computer is your image on your computer? It's on my desktop. I'm. All right. All right. Just answer my question. Okay. Cool. Now, go to Zoom. Okay. Make, make sure that it is a full screen. Uh, what I'm looking at, you guys? No, it's not. All right. Okay. Now hit share screen. Oh, okay. Hit your desktop. Okay, got it. Okay. Now it's hiding. Cool. Fish. So now, there you go. Is that, is there that it is. I'm trying to open it and it won't open. Plus, I have another one. Okay, uh, hold on one second. Um, all right. Oh, there it is. Double click it. This one? And double click it. Hmm. What, what kind of fish are they? Those are, um, oh gosh, those are silver, which oh, really? is, um, silver or coho. All right. Uh, um, salmon. Yeah. Do you see where your preview um, go go open with? Oh, uh, open with, and then preview. And if not, go to Photoshop Elements. All the way at the top. Okay. Hmm. Okay. It's working slow. Hey, we see progress. That, <laughs> that can give us a smile. Oh my God, I'm burning up now. Oh, Victor. We, you 
have to get back to bed as soon as possible. I'm having hot flashes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now Martin laughs. <laughs> You're gonna fall over. Dude. You guys only knew. Uh. Okay. You know I don't think I'm gonna be able to share today, so that'll help <clears throat> cut it short. Okay, I didn't have much time this week. I kind of told you I was. Oh, I got. Sorry. All right, so let me ask you: Did it yeah. change from last time you showed us? Yes, there okay. is. This is actually. I went to go use oh, my yeah. light box. Uh huh. Only to draw on the back side of the picture, so uh -huh. it's in reverse now. But you couldn't even tell. That's how balanced the picture is now. Oh, I can see it at the bottom with the little the little parts that one isn't yes. off to the side. So um, there wasn't really many things to uh, um, alter on it. Um, there was, and we're starting to see the thickness of the ribbon, which was nice. Which is nice, uh, rather than having all those lines break break it up. Um, I also, erase just a little bit. You know, it's not a lot of difference. Like I said, we didn't have a lot. So mine will be quick in the sense that I just wanted to erase the, whoops, what did I just do? You clicked your paint bucket tool white. So hit um, Command Z. Watch it blow up. I'll hit the letter V. V? Yeah, okay, now you should be fine. Okay. <clears throat> um, I erased the lines in the ribbon part. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to erase this line, but I didn't. But that's okay. Because there was, I wanted that feeling of it cupping around, like mm -hmm. it cupping the mm -hmm. cross. And I didn't know if that would be, I, I still have a lot of things to to change and play around with. I didn't even get to my markers to darken it. I did do one on my iPad and that was a lot of fun. I'm, you know, lear learning about that. And um, I wish I could post it again. It would take, I don't want to take up a lot of time on that. I'm going to take time to learn how to upload it and then put it on message and you can see, well, actually I did, I did put it on message, but I can't seem to again to get it over. So for next week then, um, you're just going to uh, do this image, but with values. <clears throat> so what I would recommend, Susan, is this. I'll hit Command-J. Okay. Okay. And then go over to your layers area, and on your background layer, turn it off. Uh, layers. All the way to the bottom right. Oh, okay. Turn this. Bottom right says layers. Bottom left. Oh. Unless I'm wrong. Yeah. All the way to the right. All the way to the right to where your your um, tools are. Your, oh, okay. I see it. <clears throat> now hit the little icon, the eyeball icon to the left, down, right there. Which one? This that, one? That one. Yeah. Okay. So now you turned it off. So now what I want you to do is go to the top of that layer thing. It says opacity. Change it to 50, maybe even down to 40, 38, okay? Yeah, probably 50 will do, okay? Print that puppy out at 50%, then use your light table and use your different thicknesses of uh, line widths, okay. your markers, and redraw it. But, <clears throat> Before you do that, print out two or three of these, okay? Yes. Then what I want you to do is use our value system <coughs> and number your lines, okay? I don't want you just to intuitively try to figure it out. That's not how we work. Okay. So get in there and figure out if this is going to be your high point of contrast, then you know this is going to be a nine and a zero, right? And that's going to be based on the width? Yeah. So this big black thick line next to a to a, a white is going to be your high, higher contrast than a thinner line next to a white, right? Right. right. 
So we talked about everything above here and everything down here. Down here is going to probably be about 60, probably about 60 to 80 percent dark, and up here it's going to be about 60 to 80 percent light. Okay. okay. So you have nice thin lines, things like this. Down here you have thicker lines. It's going to have weight to the bottom, really showing that difference of it breaking through and coming into this very different uh, energy. So. Okay open up the lines here, which would mean make them thinner so there's more air around them. Yes. And then coming down here, just build that base up so it, it, it builds weight on it. So I'll make the lines going across thicker. I'm just trying to repeat in words that I can understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's okay. it. Terrific. Victor I, love, Victor, I love the way when I'm stumped and I wouldn't know what to do next. You come yes. in with the most beautiful direction. And I love the fact that you pay me for it. Ah, uh, we love paying yes. you for it. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. You're worth every dime. So it's a good I relationship. Want, then. I'd feel so guilty if I didn't pay for it. <laughs> There's a Catholic in me. <laughs> well, it's not the Catholic in you. It's it's oh, yeah, it's. It okay, you see my mom. Actually, it's funny because the Jews call it the bread of shame, right? Oh, yeah. So whatever you, whenever you get a gift, it's our human nature to want to reciprocate it. So that's the beautiful thing about... They fight that nature. <laughs> well, and it's why a lot of artists get themselves in trouble, right? They feel evil. They feel bad. They feel, oh, my God. And it's, that's why you got to make the deal, you know? How many relationships outside of business do you ever get yourself into in your life where you're like, you fought that and you didn't make the deal up front, and then you basically got screwed in the end, right? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, and this is what the maps are all about. You're kind of making a deal with your artwork. You're saying, okay, you are going to be the male. You're going to be the female. You're going to be the heavy, thick part of it. You're going to be the light, airy part of it. And we have to come to some terms and make an agreement that both, of, both, both work and are honored so that the whole can be completed in work, right? It's, it's all composition is, is relationship management. You're managing lines and space and points and values. Uh, let me show, show you something, some, uh, Karen. When we were doing our thrust map, we had a vertical, horizontal, diagonal, and arabesque, or curve, and a high point of contrast, okay? Those five elements come from the language of design, or other people might call it drawing, okay? Because in drawing, when we're creating visual elements, there's only five letters in our vocabulary that we get to create every word from. That is a vertical line, a horizontal line, a diagonal line, a curve, and a point. So the point is that high point of contrast, okay? So if I want to create a shape, let's say, square or if I want to make it a form three-dimensional I do a square with a couple diagonals and an implied square okay if I want to do um, let's say a triangle shape or I could do a pyramid which is a, a form version of that if I want to write um, the word I I created it with a curve, a horizontal, two diagonals, a curve and a horizontal, or I could do all, all straight lines if I want, right? So there's different ways of writing it. Or I could do it as a diagonal, horizontal, diagonal, horizontal, diagonal, horizontal, diagonal, diagonal, horizontal, diagonal, horizontal, design. I'm still writing it, just using a lot more le letters. But you're a magician, Victor. That's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I heard he was. That's so cool. <clears throat> you're just writing it. That's why uh, a picture has a thousand words, because <laughs> we're literally writing words. Thank you. I am. I was so like lost on what I was doing and now I remember now what we talked about and because of my, um, like I said, I got sidelined and 
Um, but I was happy. You know what I'm really happy about is I have never really taken the time to really stay and draw and draw and draw a picture. Um, I am enjoying the picture, this picture more than the other ones I did in the past. Um, except for the girl lying down with the chicken on her chest. We're, we're going to get back to the chicken on her chest. Oh, I love her. I just, I got to do the chicken on the chest. Karen does amazing foul, foul in footwear. And we're going to help her design an amazing collection that's going to make a lot of money. And it's going to be very cool. Um, the uh, reason why you're, you're loving this so much, Susan, is because you're becoming so much more intimate with your work. Yeah. You know, and that's the reality. You're actually, it's kind of like being a mar in a marriage that communication doesn't really, uh, isn't really present and you're living with the person, you know, and you're going through the motions. And so you have your drawings and you have your paintings, but when you actually are able to actually have effective, real, honest communication that goes deep and like deep, deep. Right. Magic happens. Yeah, because the start of my drawings really have a, a passionate point because, because for me, it is all about um, my faith and my walk with my faith and, and presenting that to others. But it's when you put composition in it, it starts to blossom where before it would just fall flat. And, and, and this is the reason why. It's called the B, oh, I got to write this in the AOC glossary now, the BKT, okay? <clears throat> no, that's not a sandwich. It's a BLT. The BKT is the process, and we talked about this last week, where you go from belief to knowledge. So I believe, well, let's use it in a religious sense, okay? I believe that there's a God. I believe that there's spiritual stuff out there, right? I believe something. A lot of people believe that, but they, what they don't believe is in organized religion, right? And that's a big mass movement right now. So there's a lot of belief, okay? But that belief then has to then transfer, it has to go through a process where it goes from belief to knowledge, where you absolutely know what it is that when, um, you know, for example, let's talk about forgiveness. You know, I believe God forgives me, right? There's a very different... Uh, way of living when you believe that versus that you know it. So when I do something stupid, like some stupid shit, and I say that on purpose because most Christians go, oh my God, you said the S word, you're gonna burn in hell, right? I don't, I don't fear it, I have no fear because I know I'm forgiven, right? So it's a very, very different place of, of existing. You can do some crazy, crazy stuff when you're in, in knowledge, when you're in knowing. Yeah, we're supposed to be transformed. Oh, I know. <laughs> now let's get to the T. See, I don't know what transformed is. All I know is technology. See, this is the belief. This is where it's like, oh, the magical thinking. <coughs> this is why when, this is where most uh, non-believers are, are beating up Christians every day or people who believe. They have a little harder time when you're dealing with knowledge because in knowledge, you don't give a crap what they say because you know you know. It's like, And you can give them the freedom to know what they know. And there's just a lot less pressure. But this is where most people never exist. They never exist in the technology. This is the belief. This is the magical thing. This is the science. And this is the technology. And the technology is when you apply the knowledge, right? It's called wisdom. And you apply it and you get a result. And every time you apply it, you get to say, you get a, a measurable result. Okay, this is where the power happens. This is where the control happens. This is where, uh, as an artist, when you start applying the technology of design and composition, you elevate above the people who know a lot of stuff and the people who believe that one day they can be good. I mean, it's you're not even in the. <sighs> This is, this is living in earth, you know, this is living in big slop. This here, people will say, where the hell are you from? Well, I see the T as being, as like I said in Romans, you, you must be transformed. Well, that's good, that's Paul's, that's Paul's talk. Here, we're talking about technology. Right. 
with the technology. And technology is the application of knowledge that gives a result. Without the result, it's just knowledge. And it's applying it, right? And I've been applying it. Now, if you want to go back to Paul, you can say Paul says, you know, all the knowledge and the, and the speaking of tongues and all that stuff. But without love, it's useless, right? So you can have all the knowledge, but without love, without the the right kind of heart, the pure heart to actually activate it and put power behind it. It's right. useless. So this is why, um, you know, what one of the philosophies um, at the Academy, Karen, is what I call the Hitler and the Rockwell principle. <laughs> very strange but if you think about Norman Rockwell and Adolf Hitler they both were very very powerful people because they used design to influence the masses okay so Rockwell decided you know the world is shitty but I'm not going to paint that and he said my paintings are not as the world is but as it ought to be and so he painted a wholesomeness. He communicated a wholesomeness. And so when we look at a beautiful thing, we go into a small town, like let's say West Reading, and we look around and we're like, wow, it's kind of like Norman Rockwell-esque, right? There's a, there's a neat, neat energy to it. Um, and that's what he gave us. Now Hitler, on the other hand, he, he was able to control masses of people, gave them a sense of pride and identity and all this other stuff. But ultimately it came to a very wicked end. Right. And so as artists, we have a very, very powerful when we learn this technology, it becomes very, very powerful. And that's why I, I you know, so far I've been lucky, fingers crossed. But I, I I really have no desire to have anybody in this academy who's who doesn't really have a genuine, pure heart at the end of the day, you know, because. When you know how to tap into the psyche of another human being and trigger it, you can give them amazing gifts or you can manipulate and, 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 and harm people. And I, I just have no desire for people to be harming people. Right. So with great power comes great responsibility. That wasn't the Bible, was it? No, that was Spider-Man. No. Um, <laughs> All right, so this is great. So print it out 50%, use your values, determine your relationships and, and how you're going to connect those relationships. This is probably going to be the dark, heavy part of it. This right. is going to be your light part of it. Right. Uh, so I'm going to reverse what I'm doing. But in yeah. So you, and you got to think about how that works, translates in, in the end uh, when you print it. Right. Okay. Okay. So... Just another little technique there, Karen, for you. Um, we call this changing the charge, where you go from one charge to another charge, one state of consciousness to another. So this is heavy and dark, and this is light and airy. As you journey through this process, you're then moved from one charge to another charge, which gives it this dynamic, it becomes very dynamic rather than boring. Um, I'm doing, also I wanted to explain, I'm doing printmaking. So all my lines on the value side are going to be just one color. It's solid. Um, unless I break apart the, the plates. So, but normally value is more the, um, the dark to light. But for me, it's going to be the width of the line. Yep. It's going to be the mountain. What type of printmaking do you do, Susan? I can't. What kind of printmaking do you do? Um, right now I'm doing linoleum, and then I want to do color graphs. Um, I'm seeing another technique that I might combine with this for the background colors, but when we get to that step, I'm going to wait for it. Right now I'm going to be, um, this is a lino cut in my head. But right now it's just one block, and I'm not going to move from that until I get this design down right. Yeah. But Martin, um, share with Karen real quick, what, what do we call this conversation? Oh, this is a uh, medium, and we don't necessarily go into medium because it's more about the story and the composition. So one of our little uh, sayings in the Academy is message over medium, right? Everything we've been talking about so far for the last hour, hour and a half is message. 
And now we've entered into a conversation about medium, which is important, but we try to keep it very, 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 very brief. Yeah. Because most people are dealing in mediums. Oh, I painted. I, I'm a painter. Well, great. great. You have nothing to say. So we deal with message, which is all about design, knowing what your story is, how you convey those things. That, you know. Right. Oh, and I'm trying to convey the lines more thicker and darker lines so that it, the, the value in that respect exactly properly. Right now, it's not reading properly. I understand that. I saw that. But I still want to present my mistake um, because I can learn from that. Yeah, you made an intelligent one. It was good. I, I, I didn't see. Well, first of all, Susan, with the mistake. I, I don't see any mistakes. We didn't give. We didn't say there's any mistakes. It's just not now. It's now. You just need to move it to the next stage, which is yeah. The it's unbalanced. It's top heavy and not bottom heavy, which is what it needs to be. Does everybody feel that? That is top heavy and and and, and not bottom heavy. What yeah. is it? Uh, Here's the thing. My thing is, I don't because you you your intention is to have that dominant contrast at the bottom. Once you place that in there, I feel like it'll give it a lot more balance. So right now we just. Don't I, I agree, Martin. Okay. Yeah. Everything is the same weight. It's basically like someone who paints and all the values are within like just the two ranges of each other. It's like, yeah, you can see it, but you can't because it's, it's not, there's no clarity. So right. that's what the value stage is going to bring. The spacing is good. The, um, the line work is good. The story is good. Now we're in the fourth stage, which is the value, and that's what you're going to bring us next week. Um, and, and, and then I think um, you're going to have a winner on your hands. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And I think everybody in this um, meetup should get it tattooed. No, I'm just joking. Um, I agree. <laughs> at least the drawing tattoo thing where you can wash it off. Uh, that'd be kind of funny, actually. That's cool. All right, so good Susan, job, Susan. I, Susan, Susan, Susan yes. I think it'd be a very interesting um, T-shirt design. Just yes, maybe you'll and that is somebody. actually, um, I plan to do, if I don't get this done in time for that, print exchange, which I don't think I will. I might print something else because it's only 13 images. Um, I'm going to do this large enough for uh, to do it on t-shirts with the lino. Literally just run it through my... Oh, pocket. really? You can do oh, that? Yeah. I can do that. You can do lino prints on t-shirts like that? Oh, yeah. Easy. That's I do cool. it all the time. All right. Okay. Cool. Let's move on. That's right. beautiful. I um, got one critique. Okay. What, what's that, Martin? The C curves, the one on the right just needs to go just a tad bit lower. Yeah. And to okay, this, the left, just a little bit. Is it, oh wait, whoops, whoops, there we go. Which one? Uh, your C curve on the right, down here at the bottom, this one. Let me get my annotate tool. It feels like it's leaning backwards, right? Yeah, it's got, it's got a, it's just, it looks, it feels a little unbalanced and unaligned. That's oh, this one? Yeah, that one. So it needs to, I think it's the lighting of the. Mm, there's no lighting here. It's ellipse is not quite as uh, deep as oh. the left one. Yeah, this, this curves out like this. This goes up. Oh, I see. So yeah. So make it curve more. Yeah. Got it. I'll screenshot that for you. Okay. No, I don't need to. I got it. All right, cool. Yeah. So, did you get your uh, stuff running? Okay. Um, and Donna, uh, are you going to share your screen or do we have to bring it up? You have to bring it up. Oh, do I? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. All right. Oh, look at it. I feel popular. I got 20 messages on Facebook. There. Except for they're all like this one artist who posts in 15 different places, and you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, let me get the. Oh, um, Donna, did you do a new version of that painting after I sent those corrections last night? No, I didn't. Okay. So we're back to there. That's fine. Um, let me bring, uh, let me open my Photoshop up. 
So, Karen, uh, let me ask you. I'm going to put you on a spot while I'm opening this up. I don't know if this is on or not. It is. <laughs> uh, Karen, um, what do you think about the meetup so far? And you're allowed to say you can you can hate it too. Oh no, I don't hate it at all. I um, this is where my brain always is. Um, I am very intrigued by taking the design process further than what I do. If I could show you, I work with Photoshop constantly to design my paintings. I just don't know that I go as in depth as you do. Um, so actually right now, not only do I use Photoshop, but I have uh, several photo editing apps that I like some of their features. So, you know, um, I work off of different kinds of grids, definitely not as in depth as you do. Um, uh, I like the interplay between the artists a lot. I think it's great to have uh, the feedback from different people. And I like the format also online. It's, it's great. You don't have to leave your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I should, oh, wait, I do have that recorded. I can use that as a little testimony. That, those are really great points. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, all good. Okay, cool beans, cool beans. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to bring in my uh, little diagram from yesterday there as well, just so I don't have to repeat it. Um, Mm -hmm. All right, so we have this up. Is it, is it going to work? There we are. All right, now let's go ahead and share this image here. La da 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 Gosh, I love it. Let's all whisper. Yes, oh, by the way, it's so incredible. The beginning of the design of this painting, and I watched. I was able to watch half of it. Oh, the, the, I kind of know where we're at with it. <laughs> ah, awesome. Well, so let, then, let me ask you because you know we've been through the whole process. What does this make you feel when you saw part of that where it began in, in its thought and now you see where it's at? Um, let's see, the part that I kind of tuned out on, you were talking about the line that comes up between the mother and the boy with the green shirt. The, I guess the, the, the line of the um, the shoreline and how the you know, directing through the painting that way, and just that small little change, how it leaves your eye and, and gives a more upward thrust to it. I'm just fascinated to see it go from the beginning of little cut out people being moved around on the, the canvas to what it is now. That's right. Is it, is it being painted in oil? Is that what it is? I know you yes. don't want to talk about medium, but I need to know. <laughs> Oil. Yeah. Okay. Do you let it dry in between these sessions? I, I have issues with that, and I know we don't want to dwell, but. No, I mean, I just kind of work on it, and, you know, um, and then I kind of wait for the next class for more direction. Um, so, Victor, um, uh, would you mind taking it apart and telling me what isn't working and why it's not working? Where will, it's working. I mean, we, we've done this before, but I, I want to com I want to complete the painting this week. Yeah, I think you're 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 almost there. Um, <clears throat> let's let's let other people give some feedback first, okay? And then sure. I'll come in at the end. So, Martin, um, what we're gonna do is uh, uh, Cheryl. I want you to contribute two, two uh, things that are working really, really well at this level. And then, Martin, I want you to come up with two things that she can improve on to get it to done, to get it to finish, okay? So we'll start with you, Cheryl. We'll do the 
the bad news first. Oh, I thought I, was, I got to do the good news. First. Oh, that's what I meant. You could do the good news first. <laughs> well, I, I absolutely think what's really working is the um, the uh, action, if you will, the energy with the legs, the vo the value in that lower kind of watery area and the lines in that whole section gives the energy that we had talked about throughout the process. I think that's really working. And um, the splash of the little boy with the green shirt, uh, you know, you can just kind of feel it, the animation in, in that area. I really am drawn to that. So, and I also think that um, the uh, horizontal line of the uh, horizon with the ship, you know, we talked about the vertical line and the background, I really, I think that that um, is working and I want to be specific why. Um, the angles of the uh, clouds, you know, I missed a week or two, and the last time I was in, we were talking about the clouds. I think that you've really pushed the value back on those, and the angle of them kind of brings the eye back around. And also the lines on the hill, you know, they just keep the eye moving in the direction that we, uh, we had talked about. I think you nailed that. Cool. Martin? All right. Well, actually, before you go, okay. let me ask uh, um, Susan, do you think removing the rope line, because uh, Donna, it looks like you just decided to remove the rope line. Um, do you yeah, I wasn't. It, sorry. Susan, do you think that was a good move, um, a wise move, or, or, or do you think it should still remain? I love what she's done with it not being there. Um, just the suggestion of it, of it right now, it's just perfect. I just, yeah. I wouldn't change a thing as far as that line value because it was um, too distracting. Yeah. And I was focusing in on the playfulness of the feet. And from a lay person into oil painting, I feel like I'm ready to splash in the in the water with the kids right now. I I'm like right there, and yeah. that's what this picture is conveying. It's um, putting you right into the water with the kids, and you can feel the splashing. You could feel the the coolness of their feet being of it hitting the water, and the energy of each person walking through it. It's 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 amazing. This is an incredible. So, so by taking out that harsh line for the rope, yes. it just you still have the movement that the rope was giving you, but right. you don't have that harsh um, right. attraction. Right. So you can just really it's much more of an easier feel, and, and you can focus on the playfulness. I understand. Yeah, it, it had it there all the way from the beginning because it helped you pull that line all the way through. And now that you could take it out, it was, it was important at the time. I understand that now, it's part of that concept of design. For me to learn that, you know, like it's okay to put a line in there and then later on take it out, but at least it was there to help stabilize the painting. Yeah. What were yeah, you thinking it, it helped. It helped me um, in terms of um, beginning with some thought of what the story is. And then learning later that um, it was becoming a forced um, element in the painting. Mm -hmm. And the story didn't depend upon the rope line. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to mention here that there's some things that bother me that kind of stick out. Um, and these are my questions right now. I feel that the maybe the, the colors in the shadow of the young lady's dress, that pink, can be reduced and this is a question and the green of the young boys and I think you mentioned Victor the back leg of the shadow maybe that has to be softer 
And then my other thought is also the lower left area of that little pond. Brighten it up because I, I think the dark, the muddiness of it detracts from just the cleanliness of the water. But I don't know if I'm flattening things and taking out something that gives interest to the eye. So, I mean, sometimes you can get to a point and you, what you have is as good as it's going to get. Or by taking it out, it strengthens it. And I didn't know what you thought, Victor, of those thoughts and everyone else. M Martin, what are your two critiques on it? I was actually, she pointed out, yeah, this right here, his shadow, and yeah, yeah. that over here, just, just, the values just feel too, they're too dark. They're pulling away. I mean, I know the attention is there because the mud is, is squishing, whoosh, 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 but yeah, something, something's not right here. Are you talking about this part, Susan? Um, we were talking about. Oh, I mean, Donna. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, uh, those three, uh, all of the information that you just said mm -hmm. is where my mind is getting stuck, and I'm not enjoying the scene. It's kind of like a, I don't know, a, a, eh, an off, an off odor. <laughs> That's just kind of joie. bothering me. Excuse me. Caca de joie. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Well, can't you design the um, bottom half like you designed the top half? In other words, it's a flip, um, like put in the grid for those shadows so that there's an yeah, I, I, energy. I, that did, I, did, I did do that, but I think it's the value. I think it's the color. I think if I just keep them more neutral and softer, Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I don't think the shapes are bad. I just yeah. think the colors and the um, the values. I, I, I just reduce it and just make it less less. This, it, it's not supposed to com compete in this in this painting. Yeah, I don't want them to compete with the clothes. I want it to be kind of like very very secondary. And so I, that's what I'm thinking. Just reduce those, uh, yeah. cool them off a little bit. Um, and I think brighten up that bottom area because sometimes pools of water are just like a sheen of, this is my thinking, or just like a beautiful sheen of glowing color that would really intrigue children as, as opposed to being um, a, a darker in that corner. But of course, I'd like to know what you guys think. I have to agree with you. Good. That's why I like you, Susan. You always agree with me. Of course I do. You're, you're Donna D. Victor, Victor is more trouble. Victor is more trouble. What do you think, Victor? Come on. You gotta, you gotta please the Victor man. Where is Victor? He left us. I'm here. I'm just listening. He's, here. He's just being quiet. Hi. Do you remember uh, this yeah. first value study? This is what we yeah. need to be. You need to have it very, very light. Your kids are 50% gray, and the dark area is their legs, right? Now, what right. we could add to it is possibly um, a gradient in the bottom, okay? So then it, it, so it fades away, okay? Yeah. So this is, this is the, the, the value map, if you will, of, of this image. Now, you did start lighting light tinning and lowering the contrast of the stuff in the back. So let me get to it real quick. Um, okay, this is why it's working up here. They're about a 50%, but we can lighten this whole bottom up. Mm. You can already begin to see. And then, yeah. and then coming yeah. back in here and, and, and having, hold on one second. Okay, these this transition, and maybe not so much of the transition, in, especially in their, the top part of their feet, right? Now that's starting to feel like they're on this guy mm -hmm. might go a little bit more, okay? Because this is really important, um, right? But here, that's beautiful. Yes. Could you take a photo shot of that, Victor? 
that's yeah. what Cheryl kept saying all the way through. It's like, it's got to be lighter in the front. It's got to be lighter in the front. No, did Cheryl that's not really what I was... say that? No. No, she I was know. saying the, the background needed to push down. No. Uh, yeah, and that's, yeah. I actually like. What's that, what's that Cheryl? Uh, no, I wasn't talking about the uh, value where the children's reflections are at all. Oh, okay. I'm, it was more the uh, the angle and the shape of that sandbar behind them, and that still troubles me, actually. It's actually hard for me to hear that, Cheryl. What did you say again? Uh, uh, well, I, I want to answer the question. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, to answer the question, I know I always like the, I, I thought the, um, the drama of having the dark shadows uh, really added to the piece for me. I, I was talking more about the sandbar, the shape of that sandbar from the beginning of your process has troubled me. Uh, I, I know what you're saying. Um, I, I like it where it is now. Um, I, I think it's, we wanted that arabesque curve because it's the line of directing that, that, that kind of talks to us about the little boy's thought and thinking process of kind of swooping around and looking, looking, that, looking in that direction. But I love the way, Victor, um, and it helps to, it, it, I wanted an, an ethereal, is that the word? Ethereal. I wanted a very special feeling, and it's that it's that unusual glow at the at the shoreline. Mm -hmm. um, and I think by reducing the foreground, um, it adds like what you're doing. Ooh, it nice, 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 nice. Whatever you're doing is great. Um, anyway, I think that that helps give it like a luminosity. And I think a luminous feeling is so important for this painting because it, it has a certain, I don't know, childlike purity and, you know, innocence and just dreamlike state. And that interests me. I like that feeling. Now, Victor, do, are you suggesting that I cool off and deepen that patch of water as it runs through so that the pond is not totally flat and doesn't come up to us? Like a like a pie in the face. Yeah, I think you want to. You have that nice warm leg, <clears throat> so you need a nice cool around it, so it has a nice contrast juxtaposition there. Um, nice. And, and then you can just kind of fade it back, and, it, and you don't have to have it go all the way to the back here, uh, because you kind of want it to fade it out. <clears throat> so you want the eye to. Yeah, I. Through. That's. Brilliant. I love that. Would would you would you take a picture of that, Victor? That is brilliant. That is so beautiful. Um, That's what we're here for, brilliance. Yeah, well, that, that now flow for, now right through to the feet, it really helps you pull into that, that. And, and you, and something you I agree. Get rid of this little knob that was pointing out here. That's right. That's and then, right. And then curve this out and then back up through, okay? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so now, okay. now you have a little bit more of a, you have an exit out and it yeah. swings around. And it's yeah. gentle. I love it's gentle. It's not harsh, right? right. So you can, that little knob in this little area here was the same issue with that line. It was just too harsh. And um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was trying to be tricky and like emphasize the grid, but mm -hmm. I'm learning a little bit from you about when you let go of one thing to uh, strengthen or support something else. But I love that because, Victor, now there is actually, sorry, Roscoe, there is actually a flow of water that is, like, the children are moving, but so is the water flowing, which it wasn't so much before. I'm sorry, my dog is being annoying. Um, and, and now that really helps complete the story. Mm -hmm. um, the dog is talking in the, in the picture. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, also on the on the girl here, and on the boys too. Pull back, passage behind them. Yeah. From the okay. sky, uh, the water can come down and just kind of break through. 
um, and it might also give uh, that feeling, especially on this front leg. Now, why is that front leg important to do that? Because now our eye has a stronger edge and contrast, right? Now that's gonna that's too heavy, so you want to just kind of dissolve it. Settle. Yeah, so so it flows behind. You can see how that. Can you take a picture of that, Victor, please? Because I I don't want to forget these details and. You know, it's really going to help um, make my painting to be more beautiful, and I'll get more work, and then I'll be a student of yours <laughs> forever. Um, forever, yes, forever. Why, why, why stop? The uh, and, I, and I don't know. I'm just just bringing this up. Okay, I think if you're going to have a lot of sun, there needs to be some hard contrast, and I feel that's what's missing in here is some really yes. hard contrast. And I don't know, I'm just, this is where I'm going intuitive. You have to spend some time and plan it out. But I'm just feeling that there needs to be maybe some hard, harder contrast through here, uh, maybe up underneath their bellies a little bit, potentially, um, maybe in their, in their legs. Um, right. Maybe even like in his face if he's looking down, right? Uh, yeah. And, and and this is something where you have to think about it a little no, bit. No, I, I I love that. I love that, Victor. I, and it's true. I, I there's a little bit of that information, and I didn't know how much I, information I wanted to put in. You know, feeling my way through. But of course, you have to return back to what is the light quality and what happens in order to be, have a consistent uh, storyline or a uh, light effect. So, I, yeah, that, that's really helpful. Yep, the little bottom of the dog. Yep. Um, yeah, and I think that adds, like, a nice little volume to, to the kids. Yeah. I feel like they're, they're, they're well-fed. <laughs> um, totally. But here, the, my, my biggest concern is really the shadow in this little area in here. So with this shadow, I, I, I don't mind it coming a little darker like that on the front, but not it can't be right. on the whole thing. Okay. I agree. There were like two sticks, right? Yeah, and and now when we start bringing that in, and you see that at a distance walking oh. up those stairs, that's pretty. Oh, it really is. It really says what I wanted to say. And thank you, Victor. I could. Uh, this is true. This make a make a commercial of this. This painting would never have happened without your um, instruction, direction, and explanation. And, and, and lower the value of those two little boats back here, back behind the side. you see the difference? Yeah. Lower it? You mean deepen it or lighten it? Words, lighten it. They're becoming a dominant lighten it. contrast. Yeah, they're becoming two. Okay. Just a little bit. These two back here. You see the difference? Yeah. Did, did you think that um, gr uh, it's kind of like a gray cobalt green um, of the water on the far right? Is that okay back there? And then there's like a little light line. I kind of did that as one of the last things, just to give it a little variation. And also, because you were mentioning how it kind of would bring your eye around. Is that I, I'm variation fine. in the water? I don't know how to answer the question in terms of color. Um, in terms of design, my eye comes in here, and right here's a value shift. So my eye is doing what, what it is that you wanted it to do. In terms of green, okay. whatever, I don't know. Um, but this is what's happening, and then this swoops around, um, coming down through here. So it, it's working. It's doing what, it's, what it needs to be doing. Mm -hmm. And okay, what, what thank you've you. done now is like taking – maybe it's not to the point where Cheryl wants it, but Cheryl brought the point up where when we had it kind of really like this, it was, mm -hmm. it was feeling maybe a little too overly designed. And now I yes. think the design is a lot more subtle, but it's still right. all there. Can I um, right. maybe mm -hmm. ask what would happen if you made this line right here a little straighter instead of curving down? Mm. Would that ruin it? Sure. Hmm. Can you delete that and then I can make a, a shift? I like it. Yeah, I like that. 
that to me feels like a natural edge of the way the water would flow. You know, what it does for, for me visually is it, it gives atmosphere and then light the value along that back edge. Because right now I can't see very well, but it looks like that back edge is darker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I have to agree with Cheryl on that. I like the composition of it. it. Maybe not the way she's describing it, but as far as me, how the eye reads coming into the picture, it reads better. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little stuck, so I'm just trying to figure yeah. out uh, uh, an in between. You are so stuck on that arabesque. Yeah. And what I... What I I'm going to just play devil's advocate. Are we so locked on to um, uh, technical stuff that we're losing? It, we're losing what? I don't know. We're definitely losing kind of something. Um. Oh, I see what you're doing. Are you? I'm trying to find, to give you that straight line, which solves your problem, but by making it a value shift, which then allows me to still have my curve, so we can, we can have both. Um, well, it's a curve. More gradual. Yeah. You know, am I the only person that feels like if we went back to the way it was before we started making changes. Oh, even that, even that helps me. But when there's something about that sandbar that looks like a, it looks vertical, it looks like a wall, it doesn't look like land, like ground. It looks like a wall behind them. Um, when you have that curve, this fixes that for me. It, because the way the water kind of moves in, there's something, and I think it's, uh, I think value, what you just did with value and even the shape a little bit, Victor, uh, because I know the way um, Donna has some of the dark shadows in that sandbar because of the way the light would hit it, um, I think is fantastic. You know, it gives, it gives some irregularity to the sand, uh -huh. but that back edge, if it's if it's the same value as the front edge, it's going to look like it's on the same plane as the front edge as opposed to receding. I think you're right about that, Cheryl. I, I have to agree. For me, it, it doesn't read properly as a sandbar unless you had more landscape there to help define why it's like that. It, so I'm putting it into like, layman's term it's like wow that's an odd looking sandbar that's uh -huh. and yeah. for design that's what the lay person is thinking so, so intuitively they're saying well i didn't know sandbars could do that just like that line coming through from there to there is so strong and now you took it out and just slightly maybe. suggested it might be there yeah and i think with Martin. the shadows the way you have some of the value shift Kind of like the way you did the clouds, so subtle. Yes. But they they could give that arabesque, could they not? Mm-hmm. As so, opposed to having that hard line. And that's what I'm, I was thinking with having this. So ultimately, what we need to do, if we're just drawing a black and white line, is we need to have the horizontal come through, okay? And we need to have the we need to respect that arabesque. The reason why we have to respect the arabesque. And in my opinion, if you had to choose one or the other, I would go with the arabesque. Not be, and, and the reason why is why. It supports the story. Exactly. This, this horizontal supports the representation, right? Oh, right. It has to look right. Let's it's a representational that. painting. It's, it's not. It's a design. And so we... we yeah, my... Sorry, Victor, my problem with that horizontal line 
of the beach edge. I know it is. I agree with you. I know it's more realistic, but then it becomes static because it's just repeating too much for me, the horizontal line above it, of the horizon. And that bothers me because I don't want to be rigid with this painting. What do you think, Vic? Vic. Um, that's why I think, just like you did with the clouds, where you had value, a slight value shift, I mean, the values uh -huh. between this blue and that white are very, very subtle, right? And, and here, and I think you use that same strategy to get both effects. So you get the horizontal, which then makes it feel a little more natural, right? Okay. And it doesn't throw people off because it can be a distraction if, if people notice it, right? So you, you okay. need to take care of that situation. But you can't do it at the, at, the, at the loss of this curve because that curve is the boy's spirit. You're not going to care for the land and, and at the expense of the boy. So you have to maybe use a small value shift to do both. And I think that's kind of what we're achieving in here. Uh -huh. Could you do a little value shift between the older girl also and the boy on that on that side <laughs> of the sand, like you did on the left of them? Um, between the boy and the green? Down. Yeah. Bring this value down here. Okay. Oops. So this where you would at an edge. And, and maybe just kind of dapple that in. Yeah. So that heat and you press on. Oh my God. Edge. That just, to me, that. Yeah. That's huge. much better. A huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're just dappling, you know, the same thing in here. Um, just dappling that into. Now we've got offense. a sandbar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it, I, I have to say, it looks great. On my wall. I don't care who the kids are. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Now, who circled that? What's going on there? I'm, I was thinking if you take this and you just apply it all back here in the same way, because, I mean, that line was just, oh that, oh, that was bugging me. But now that you soften it up, it feels like the water is actually, it, it gives it motion. Yeah, like it's, like it's you know. Yeah, it's not a barrier so much yeah. now, but it just, it is kind of gliding up and yeah i think that's your solution that's right we took amazing to greatness <laughs> yeah that oh i can sleep tonight now <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just, all I saw when I looked at that beautiful painting was that line, and I thought, "Am I gonna have to get a, my gloves on with Victor over this one? Is it gonna be for, uh, function over form?" On you know that those are the tapes that were going through my head. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly what it is. Uh, function anyway, over that, form. That absolutely changes the whole dynamic and. And um, and yet, I, I think keeps keeps the uh, arabesque in there, and the story isn't lost. Yeah. And that's what Bill was also saying when he was looking at. It. He just felt that the water line on the shore inside the puddle, it was just too harsh. And um, <clears throat> and you know, and that's why one of the things we do is talk about this thrust because the thrust is the feeling of a direction, right? It's not necessarily right. has to be a line. So all of this here, you can bring in a close value and, and start dappling it and breaking it up. Um, right. You know, so that you don't have these, these straight lines. But when you do that, make your marks in the direction that you're being intentional. Right. About that, you know, so that's starting to look kind Beautiful. of... Beautiful. Right. <clears throat> and then lowering, you know, oh, the values nice. in here. You know, just, just feathering it out. Um, but also make sure that you're just not putting whites on it, you know, that you're actually using some color in there because this, to me, looks really washed out and not attractive. Um, <clears throat> but somehow you want to lower these values but still have some color in there, you know. I, okay. I, just, put a, I just put a white grading in over it so we could see it in terms sure. of value. Um, now let me see here. If I copy all of this... And yeah, so there's the value study. 
that's working. That's wow. not. That's so great. Victor, did you take a picture of that? Uh, yes, I did. Um, oh, grand. Thank you. Okay. Let me, um, let me blow this up just a little bit, take a bigger one. Oopsie. <clears throat> yeah, so now when we look at it, the values work, the story's told, you know. Um, each, each kid is identified. Um, I am starting to feel that this curve here is a little too strong. So yeah. what we can do is just maybe fade it so it fades off the edge. And then as your eye comes in, we have that slight little shift to kind of – and the reason why you right. have to have this little uplifting curve is because he's looking up and over. Right. Without it, he's just looking straight and over, and it just doesn't. It does. It, it removes the um, the little kidness part of it. Like he's trying to stretch, and he's looking up and over. So we need the eye to kind of be take that little bit of a plane. And, doing a you know, Norman Rockwell type look. Yes. True. Yeah. Okay. So passage, and 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 lower your values. Your value contrast. And, and all okay. of a sudden, there'll be air that's moving through them now. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Can't wait. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm going to try one last thing here um, just because I want to <laughs> see what it looks like. Um, What I'm trying to do is punch up the contrast a little bit just to see um, which one do you prefer, Donna? The more subtle, uh, softer contrast or the one with a little harder contrast? Gosh, I kind of like the harder contrast. I agree. Um, do you agree, Martin? Yeah, I like it just bumped up more. Susan, what do you think? Harder contrast or the lighter contrast? I would like. I do like that contrast. I do. I'm sorry. I think what was that? Beautiful. I do like the harder contrast. I, um, lighter is beautiful still, you know, and really soft touch, but this just seems to, um, nail on the head. Yeah, it just you in better. I, I have yeah. a question for Donna about that. Um, the kids, everything really pops away, but you use the word ethereal more than once. And I think this loses a little bit of that. The harder the contrast, the less the serial. Yeah, that's true. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Cheryl. Maybe I can re readdress this aspect once I make the other changes and just feel if it feels complete. Mm -hmm. If it needs to have some, a little more stronger color in the hair, in the shirt, you know, the figure is basically what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we are anyway, Victor. Um, no, you know, I, I, I just have to spend a little time at the, the other, if that's what it takes. You brought up takes. the color of her dress. I don't think that's a problem at all. I don't think the colors of any of the kids clothing is a problem because I was, I, I have a photographic memory and so, and with picture framing, I have to picture colors in front of mats, you know, matte colors in front of it. And when I started changing colors in my head, it just didn't, it didn't feel like it changed the picture that much. Mm -hmm. You didn't lose the, the color is just kind of like the pop. It's like the, I don't know. It just, it's really neat. I was going to say the top of the ice cream, you know, the, I mean the cake. <clears throat> has so, pop so, color. Let, let's look at this real quick. Here's the higher contrast one. Okay. Uh, that's why I was a little hesitant on it as well because of what, 
Cheryl was saying in terms of you wanted the ethereal, you know, like out in the sun, it's almost like a memory type of feel to it, right? Uh, remember yeah. remember when, the, when the kids were young, you know? So maybe we blow it up. Okay, this is us higher contrast. Now watch what happens. We take out that background so it's not so contrasty. So it's uh, what, what's originally there, okay? Mm-hmm. So let's get that back. We don't need to contrast the background. You can see how now the kids get darker, right? Because now the background's lighter. But let's look at the front kid. If we erase everything except his leg in terms of contrast, just punching up the contrast in that front leg, we really feel that step, right? Maybe even yeah. putting the contrast in the back of his leg a little. So, boom. That's very, very clear what's happening. You come to this boy. Again, his legs, right? So what we can do is um, wash out his um, – Contrast on his shadow. Right. Um, wash him him out, and so that that right leg, leg. and then yeah, maybe right leg is a little dark. Maybe maybe a little like that, because we we still want a little bit of that dark, so we can really feel the like he's about ready to leap out, right? <laughs> um, and then up here the same thing. So maybe we come in one side. Now we have that nice little arc in in the little boy. And then in the uh, the girl, we can wash out her the bottom part of her, anything underneath her her arms, and we, we remove all this. So now again, we're coming back and we're just punching up the contrast a little bit. I think this one in the boy in the middle, we could probably just not do anything with. I think he's fine the way it is. So he has so much action in him, anyways. It's yeah, to add more contrast is really going to hurt it. I think a little contrast in the dog's face. <laughs> Um, and maybe we don't, maybe we don't need so much contrast in that little boy's head. Yeah, I agree. And and we can lower her head too. So really, I think it's just really honestly in the end, just kind of bringing up that contrast in the front foot, which is where the subject is. I mean, you know, the the frontal. Yeah, and I like the way you reduced and it even softened that lower area of the puddle. Yeah. Um, softening it. I think that really does a lot. I think that's what I I wanted. I didn't I didn't know how to address it, but I think that's what I wanted. That very soft, luminous bottom <laughs> edge yeah. where we kind of enter the painting, and then we get into the action. Yep. Yep. It helps you, you know, I, 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 could you lighten just like a two percent of the shadow of the front boy's leg? Just a little bit. Right now, that's the highest point of contrast. Is that where you want it? Sure. Did you did the front boy? Yeah. Yeah. The, that's, that's the leg looks a little dark, that shadow. Just a little. Not the leg, the shadow. No, the I shadow like itself. Just a, a, there. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. So it's that's not natural. So much of a stick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Victor, you have to take a picture of this. I mean, it has changed since the last picture. Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah, actually got a recording. Oh, I forgot. Okay. Yeah. She but really I can works. just bring, I can just bring this down to the um, studio. I don't, I don't get a Wi-Fi in, in the basement. So, in turn, uh, remember to lower the contrast on the back of the boats. Um, and uh, and then pop up the contrast again. I think the contrast really is not in the foot per se, but in the bottom of that shadow. And part of that's going to happen by lowering the contrast of the entire shadow. Right. And yeah. um, it's I like this because it's almost like where two realities meet. There's a physical world and that reflective world, and they kind of just like yeah, it, kind of crossing over. Right. You know, that, the world of play and the world of uh, yeah, that's, that's nice. Beautiful. Yeah, you've got uh, three different little worlds there with the mom, you know, the older do uh, sister, and then the youngest one, and then the playful one, and then the one branching out. So there's what the. All right, thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Cool. You All right. a great lesson in the process, Donna. Oh, listen, my pleasure. It's my, my benefit. Thank you. 
So where are you going to sign this puppy? I did sign it where you told me to sign it. If you looked a little oh, closer, see. it's signed right where, kind of right where you told me. See that subtle thing right in the jiggy right there. All right. And it looks nice. Did you design it? You designed it. I did, did I? You have to sign your name above mine. <laughs> <laughs> Only if he gets 50% of the commission. <laughs> he kind of just put the he did. He in. did in the class. <laughs> <laughs> right? He, absolute, he absolutely did. <laughs> No, oh, that's well, listen, awesome. I have okay. I have one more question. Hey, hey, uh, Victor. One more question. Yes. Do I when I reduce the shadows of the children? Um, I know the shadows of the first, the oldest son is kind of on the neutral side. Do I also do I have little hints of their clothes in that shadow as long as I have it reduced in value? Yeah. What? Yes, you're just reducing value, not color. So. Bring their color. It doesn't their color. matter, right? Yeah, I think you want to bring more color into that thing because you want you want to reflect the blue of the sky. Um, okay. You want to bring the color bouncing off that water. It's also going to make that water look a little cleaner, right? Because if it's just grays and and you know, then it's just right. a little muddy, and then that's part of the. <clears throat> okay. Thank you for explaining that to me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, listen. Well, I'm going to get into the studio to paint. Do you guys mind? Go ahead. No. Go for it. it. <laughs> okay. Love you guys. <laughs> Talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. <clears throat> Any last comments? Um, no. Um, I would like to maybe talk with you about the uh, my figures i feel like i need to move forward and it's been three weeks or something since we because i missed last week so if i wait another week it'll be three weeks mm -hmm. uh can you and i uh talk about negotiating some time to keep me moving sure um what well, you don't have them or are they the same figures well, i do just... you know let me can i try something here? yeah bring them up um i might uh, well, let me just see if anybody else has to go real quick. Um, and you can't yeah, you'll email them. That your can you? What? You, can you take a screenshot off of your uh, iPad and then email it to yourself? Uh, yeah, I've done. You've got to unshare your screen from. Oh, I'm sorry. There. Okay, my bad. Uh, let me just see if anybody else has to get out of here. Um, Karen, I know it's getting a little late. Uh, are you good uh, to, to stay around or, or do you need to head on out? Um, I can stick around. I'm actually sketching out the panel that I'm going to be painting today while I'm sitting here. So I'm not right, cool. multi <laughs> Somehow along the way, I lost my video. It doesn't matter, though. Oh, okay. You can't see anything? I can see you guys, but the video of me up in the top right corner is gone. Oh. doesn't matter, though. Okay, cool. I'm going to try this. I, I took a screenshot of photos. I'm not going to be able to demo my SketchUp. Mm -hmm. So let's see how this works. And I'll share a couple. I still have to show you how to um, create those grids on your paper. Yeah, exactly. Low. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, maybe that's my problem. I didn't allow Zoom to share my images. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, I don't think so. Did, or did we? Yeah, we did. Oh, well, there's one part of her. Uh, there you are. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like a kind of a pain here this morning. Oh, take your time. Let's see. Okay, let's try this. Okay. So I'm going to just put some stills in that I've worked on. Um, oh. That work? Yes. Nice. It's learning, you know, every computer has a different way of doing things. And, okay, so I don't have, I was going to um, show you, and I think this is my best uh, way of doing it, I was going to show you how you set up with the layers, but it's a lot like Photoshop. This is the one where I um, superimpose one of the grids, the square grids, and you can see that I... I had my um, sketch and I sketched into the grid, kind of using the thrust map that we worked on in earlier sessions. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that you said make larger and move to the left. Because um, I had a, an image where I, it was centered and she was smaller. I don't know if you recall that, but. Anyway, this is the one that um, when I posted on Messenger, everybody really liked better, so that's why I saved it. But uh, what I'm trying to do with the um, with just the values and this type of sketching is to follow the thrust maps as well as the grid and lock things into a grid. I don't know what more to say. So that's one. Do you want me to move on to the other? No, not yet. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and this is just the image, not the, um, <clears throat> the sketch up. Like you can't move anything around? I can't because I, I, for some reason, I'm having, I am, yeah, I, I can share photos, but I can't share my SketchUp app for some reason. I have to figure out how to do that. Okay. I thought I'd be able to just share a screen, but it, it doesn't allow that. Um, oh, man, I need a hat. Um, this is what I'm thinking here, Cheryl. This was the one with the weight on her shoulders, right? Which one is this? Yeah, this is the one feeling stuck. Yeah. Um, so what you're doing is, you're, line. yeah, you're trying, okay. you're locking, you're locking things into the grid mm -hmm. for placement. And, and at that level, you're, you're, you're doing well. What you're not doing is asking yourself questions like, how does this support the story? So right now, you have the pressure over her small and the support under her big. 
So if this shoulders would have been down on this line, then we would feel the weight of all of this space on those shoulders. Okay, mm. might even have this make her just a little bit smaller. Okay, like oh, there's a lot of weight on her shoulders. Um, <clears throat> so, can I ask you before you continue? Did you start um, recording this segment? It's, I'm just, it's it's all been recording the whole time. Okay. Um, I, what I didn't do this time was break them up into little segments. I, uh, so it'll just be one long one. Um, and the other issue, see, right now what's happening is you're trying to figure out the grids, but you're also playing with values, which is yeah. normally what we don't do. Because every value from a light to a dark creates a line. So there's all of these little lines that you have going on in here that now – we are um it's being created that we're not managing mm. um i think for the most part you know you're, you're, you're okay with it come on what's going on here i think then um we should stop with this image and i need to review all five of them after this critique on this one yeah i think we need to get to the line the line level uh, I was fine with you using the, um, the values real quick to kind of get your idea down. Mm -hmm. And then we break it up into a line because we have to manage it at that level. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't think you're far off. We just want to be intentional. Okay. Um, and then when we get to values, there's a way that we do values so that you, again, can be very, very intentional about everything. So right now, by putting a couple values here, well, what's all this information? This has to, you know, this just can't be randomly painted, whatever. It has to relate to the story. It has mm -hmm. to support the image. It has to support the spacing. It has to support the lines. Um, and so to have all this blank up here is dangerous yeah. because we don't know what it is. Is it a light well, value, dark value? Yeah. Well, I guess one of my questions is whether this is the right grip. You know, I don't even know if I'm picking the right grid. It felt right. And when I had her centered, uh, let me see if I have that. How did you pick this grid? Just because you looked at one and said that feels right? Yeah, that's okay. Was, so we'll where's your dominant diagonal in this, in this grid, in this uh, image? Well, we have, um, originally in my thrust map, I had like this. This was my, I had two diagonals, and then the horizontal kind of looked like that. Mm -hmm. so this was the point of contrast on her, her shoulders, that mm -hmm. weight on the shoulders. I remember we said the reason why you would have um, two diagonals is because it would be a symmetrical design. Mm -hmm. So now by shifting it off to one side, it's not symmetrical anymore. Right. Um, and, right. That's right. So maybe putting it in the center and lowering her so that, you know, her head here, we get a red, her head here might be here, right? So, or maybe even lower, maybe here, and her shoulders right. are here, okay? Because now you have all of this weight. And when someone looks at that, they're going to feel the weight on her. So yeah. this is all dark up Palmer. here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Uh, right now she doesn't f have that weightiness she actually looks like she's contemplating something very serious well that, and that's the intent that's the story every one of these is contemplation contemplation is the same okay. feeling, feeling stuck it's more of an, an emotional um, and thoughtful um, feeling of inertia well then i have a question don if if she doesn't want that much weight on it can she leave it as is and just fill in the back with more mm -hmm. dark, darkness mm -hmm. yeah i would fill this all in black might even go down to this line here yeah and this could be a different value because this is what's more important that darkness um 
here. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of the whole, honestly, I, I, I was just kind of sketching like, the image and I, leaving the context sort of undone at this point. No, you need that filled in because that's too um, ambiguous. Mm -hmm. okay. I feel, I feel like, like the light, light area, area to the right that Don was saying needs to be darkened. Again. What it what does, does if you leave it light leaves the impression that there is an open door there and that yeah. gives it a totally different meaning to the story. Uh, you, okay. you hold, 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 hold on one second. Karen, I think your um, there was an echo that was going on and I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. It's, it's probably because I'm calling in here. Hold on one second. Let me just check something out real quick. Um, so I'm going to I think your microphone finally started working. Say something. Okay, can you hear me better now? All right, now I'll, 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 I want to try something different. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to unmute you and I'm going to mute your phone. And I'll say something. Can you hear me still? Yeah, you can turn your phone off now. Your oh, microphone okay. started working. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just commenting on the design of the light area on the right hand side that you had originally said needs to be darkened um, to give the impression of the weight. And I said, if you leave it light, it feels like uh, an open door or an open window, which changes the story of the picture. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, honestly, I I'm doing five consecutive uh, paintings, which um, has to do with change, uh, uh, transformation on some level, but change from being stuck to action is, uh, you know, possibility to action to Kind of reminiscing and doorways and pathways can be a real integral part of the story so you'll have to make the decision on what value you want do you want it dark do you want it light maybe light on this side dark on this side or dark on this side light on this side that does change the story mm. okay if you want it to be a little more hopeful, then I would probably put light on this side. Okay. On the right should, side. Yeah, this would be a light value. Mm -hmm. And then this would be a darker value. Okay. You could put a, a it mostly dark, but just put not a, um, a white on dark, but a, like a gray tone box or something over there to uh, leave like an escape. What do you mean? On the right hand side, just well, let me get my tools. Because I like the idea of it being more dark all the way to give that ominous feeling. Because right now it isn't, this is so light on this right Over side here. That, that you have, it's, it's too bright for the whole context of the picture. But if you had like a, an area where it's, there's a light gray value going out or it somehow somehow maybe right this way going out light going out this way it gets lighter and lighter in a gray tone well uh, let me ask this i feel i'm uh, i have a question whether we're putting the cart before the horse here um if i have work to do with the grid and the line um the values, maybe that should be a future discussion at this point. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we need to figure out a system to break her up into very simple lines. And then you're using the grid. Um, <clears throat> so. Okay. Um, so what we can do is, is there any way to lower her, va uh, her opacity in the program you have? Yeah. Okay, lower her 50, 40%. Let me, um, let me do, I can do that right now. It won't mm -hmm. take me long. Uh, what program are you in? Uh, I'm in Sketch Club. Okay. okay. So, uh, okay, there we go. Let me try this. Oh, that was... Well, I want to show you. This 
is wait. This was the earlier one that I had her centered. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said lo lower and put her, make her bigger, lower and put her to the left. So that's all I did was I just moved her over to the left. And she didn't lower or make her bigger. Uh, no, this was no. So what I can do. <sighs> okay, I'll make it about, there we go. Okay, I'm right there. Oh, that's the same one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh crap! Oh sorry, my sorry, my language. I have one. Well, I have one um, uh, superimposed over the other. Okay, now I will export. Whew. All right. Okay, so, good. so now what we can do is come in here. And we can start drawing. Lines, right? Yeah. So we can, you know, see where her leg would be. You know, start drawing that in here. This line here, what we would want to do if we have it on a grid, is mimic a line that's close to the grid. And that's one point. Uh, and so, I, I'm hoping you can see I, I did yeah. try to follow the angles. And yeah. but doing this, um, you know, doing it more in angular shape. Yeah, and and that's going to work with your style and ultimately what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So now here you have this angle, but does it? Which line does it come through from the grid? Mm -hmm. So maybe you need just to come down. You know, maybe this angle here just comes straight straight down, so you don't come down to that bottom. You kind of come behind that foot. Um, <clears throat> in case you can come across here, you know, this is here. You can repeat this line here. Now, this you, you were just making. This is where you want to get. You see this line, this point here? Mm -hmm. So now you're, you can shift her body in. Mm -hmm. um, you can make her arm here. Uh, we have a point here we can put on, right there. So if you're starting to now conform it to the grid itself. Um, now with these shapes here, these dark shapes, you can easily come and just envelope the head so it's like so. 
-hmm. And just get these shapes in here, these basic shapes. Um, I'm hoping you can see that I did try to do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, my, I, I, my pencil was much fatter, so. Well, I, I see that you're doing it, but you're doing it with like strokes. Yeah. And it's laying down value. So ultimately, yeah. what you want is you, you need to figure out, okay, is this your window over here? This is your change of charge. Here's one and here's one, right? And she's mm -hmm. the transition between the two. Now, see, when you look at that, then all of this stuff down here in the bottom really isn't as important. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could really shift this entire uh, square up. So maybe it, maybe it actually ends here. I don't know what the legs are if they're important or not. So this could have come all the way up through here. Yeah, we had we talked about those legs before and I, somehow they are important to me. They just feel kind of, you know, I don't need the whole leg and foot and everything like I originally had, but they do feel like they add to some of the drag. Okay. So well, even that, even so having that, half a leg. Yeah. I know cutting off at the angle, ankles is a no-no. So here we come across, now what we don't want to do is make, make this feel like it's the dominant horizontal, right? So we can come in maybe up to here and then come across like so. And this could be something now she's kind of like boxed in, which then gives Let us. Let me ask you, Victor, when I was working with the grid, a question I had was, um, you, just, you just chopped the grid um, off. And is that okay? I didn't chop it off. I moved when it up. Did you move it up? Yeah. But how is she going to fit into the angle once you do that? Well, ultimately what you want to do is you want to place her first. So mm -hmm. you would shift her down and then redraw her with the right angles. Okay. Okay. So, um, I got to figure out how to do this. I mean, this sketch up, you are Sketch Club using this has it's an incredible savings in time for me as far as being able to um, you know sketch my work and I've become kind of addicted to it. Uh, I, I keep going back to the paper and and all of that out in my studio and I get frustrated because I could quickly erase and redo and overlay and so I'm. I really need to figure out how to make this work with our meetup too. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I or something my, like it. If I can give my two cents, yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. why I feel this way, but I do feel Cheryl that the legs are important. Yeah, right, which goes against what Victor just said. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as far as leaving it down, I don't know why, and and that probably is less from a design sense and more from a symbolic sense. Yeah. I, I, I kind of agree too. I understand, but I I would lean more towards design than. Um, well, if it's important, just make it work. Got to figure it out. It's, it's yeah. you know, just like we did with Donna's piece. It was important important to have that horizontal, but it's also important to have the other one. And so then you just have to kind of negotiate that relationship. So if you need the legs, here are two legs. You know. Uh, I like the legs with, the, I just don't <coughs> agree with um, chopping that part off and shifting the whole picture up, having higher weight on the top. I just didn't want to see her completely drop too low. I mean, I could see it going down one grid line further. So her head is on the top of that center line. So you have, oh gosh, oops. So she would, this whole head would move right onto here. And so her, sh her, sh everything would just drop down on the grid. So you just move the grid up. So that there's a little more weight on top is how I'm seeing it. Then you would have the legs be right here because they would be right, you know, down on that level. But I'm, I'm just seeing you just shift the whole grid down one notch. Yeah. Kind of cost me a little horizontal to get those shoulders in there. Um, 
what I'm trying to figure out right now is like, okay, what's on this side and on this side? Because in this design, we have this rectangle coming in, boxing her in. We have these, if we put these legs on an angle and kind of force that Baroque, but now she's being, she's, or she's boxed in, she's kind of found a way out, right? Over into here. And so this could be your window that she's sitting in front of or a door or something. Um, you know, you could actually even have it a curve. So everything else is boxy and then you have this curve that she's sitting in front of, you know. Um, oh, I like that. So there's, there is like an escape in here. Um, well, you know, I you know. What's that? I would like to work uh, with images that are more dominant in the piece as opposed to diminutive. Um, I'd like my figure to be a larger part of the painting. Okay. And in fact, even um, off off the painting, you know, I'd like them to be larger. Whenever, and this is just going back to when I paint the images so that maybe the head kind of bleeds off the top and, and some part of the body bleeds off the painting, in my process, I'm feeling more connected with that piece than if I have this kind of little image in the middle of a big canvas or down in a corner or something. You know, that's mm -hmm. my whole emotional response to my process. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and what's interesting is sometimes I'll start with a larger image and it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and pretty soon I realize I really don't even like what I'm doing and I just paint over it and start again. So that's what I'm feeling as I'm watching her shrink. <laughs> um. That's kind of compelling right there. So you have that weight with the shoulders. Maybe they need to be here. But having this nice diagonal, again, pulling you out from this weight over into this direction. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's interesting if you have this diagonal, it kind of makes you feel like she's listening on this side, right? Mm -hmm. She's hearing a call. She's hearing help, whatever it might be. Um, could even have her head turn to the side a little bit. Hmm. I think that's the next painting. The next painting is um, contemplating what if. Mm -hmm. So I think with this one then, you probably need to stick with your original theme. Put her in the center, blow her up. Just have more of a static kind of <laughs> position. If you need to put her legs in there, put her legs in there somehow. Um, and then maybe coming down on an angle. And then I don't want it to feel depressing. You know, I don't want it to feel like she's in a tomb. I just want her to be contemplating, you know. I want it to be more. Um, I, I, I actually really like what you have going on that picture. Um, I you know, when I look at this one, I'm sorry, Susan, I interrupted you. But when I look at this line drawing, it just feels like she's in prison. And that's not my story. My story is just, you know, mm -hmm. being in that space between this thought and the next, this action and the next. It's kind of like, um, you know, after you reach a goal and you flatten out and you're wondering what's next. And you, sometimes you're just kind of in that no man's land. That's you know what? Where she is. I, I'm, I, I agree with you because I still see that picture conveying what you're saying. What I see as being um, an issue for me, I don't mind the in, where the, the body is, the way, is the arms are just so straight down. I wouldn't even mind if they went on an angle a bit, just mm -hmm. a hair. Mm -hmm. You know how you you're sitting down and they're just out a bit and you're just like looking down trying to like okay what did I just go through all right what just happened 
and that's but everything you're saying makes sense except for the fact that is the first time you're bringing it up in terms of this specific image oh, so, you um me? yeah and and so well that surprises me oh well, it's always been about um the weight and the pressure and the stress on her now if it's about the release or like um yeah, there is pressure, but she's thinking towards the future, let's say, right? Like what's next or, or something like that. That changes everything because yeah. with, with that, the reason I, I, I mean, I could tell we were thinking about that because there's no way that you said what you said and three weeks later we're, we're, we're in this boxy type of, um, con, you know, conformed, you know, double uh, diagonal design, okay? So this design is telling me the conversations that we've had over the last couple of weeks because what we would have said is if you were, if you said, okay, she feels a pressure and now she's thinking to the future or something like that, well then maybe we have all of this like this, but then we have our head over here. That, that little bit of a shift is now starting to have us move from where she is where all this pressure may be on her Okay, and maybe this might be dark here. And, and her head now is starting to shift towards a different direction. Um, and we might even repeat that angle in the legs. Which now brings us back, back to whatever it is over here. Um, <clears throat> now your other designs have a very similar feel to this because those were about contemplating about what if and, and when and uh, anticipation and those things. So there was, those designs are all more like this. But this one was a very static weight from above coming down, making her feel crunched and pressured and, and stressed. And that's what- um, Well, stuck. And stuck, exactly. I didn't feel, I didn't, yeah. I. The pressure and all of that, you know, I think that came with maybe my my inability to share my story well enough because all of the weight on the shoulders and all those things came from coaching after, you know, I tried to. So, I don't know where I go from here. So, when we have, if she's stuck, now what's the second part? What's that second charge? In this particular piece? Yes. I don't know. Because if this image is only about her being stuck, then it's going to be a very yeah. depressive painting. And Well, yeah. And and I, I don't boring. want it to be depressing. I just want it to be between thought and action. Between it's in that space. <laughs> Of inertia, um, and, it, and it has to be done. And it has to be done in this specific frame, in this specific painting. You can't rely on another painting to to, to give I that. Guess, I guess the way you describe it, you describe it a lot more depressing than the way I feel. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe that's what it needs to be, but. Um, and maybe I'm getting into my head again here because uh, how I identify with this is I, I know intellectually when, when I am between knowing, knowing and then unknowing and then knowing again, it's in that space of unknowing that feels, it's disequilibrium, it's the uh, it's darkness, but it's not depression. And what what I keep seeing with this, these stress maps is depression, not inertia. Well, I see sense? the opposite. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I just don't want to feel depressed. I don't want to paint a depressing painting. <laughs> Okay, so then where are we going to? Let's just start with the end. Then. I don't where, know. Where, where is yeah. it that? Because right now everything here is verticals, weight on top of her, dark light. I mean, it's all 
It, it, yeah. We get the sense that there's a pressure here. Now, if we move her down, okay, or stuck, whatever you want to call it, but ultimately, um, if, you, if you're stuck with no hope of getting out, you're depressed. <laughs> like yeah, that, so I okay. want hope of getting out. All right, so now we have to add that in here. So let's just okay. keep her where she's at because now that changes the story. Okay, so her being weighed over into this little area makes sense. Okay, so where would we then, so this is one charge. Where would we put the other charge? Would it be down here? Would it be up here? Would it be over here? It would be in the upper right. I believe. Mm -hmm. Didn't we just see this in the Norman Rockwell? I don't know. What do you mean? Okay. Remember how you're showing us like his head went, like he had mm. this, right? Like this is the painting. And then his head came through here to this other painting, right? Well, you said that there was this little bit of just an opening like this. We mm -hmm. took this and reversed it because I was thinking she's feeling this weight on her shoulders. You ever seen that picture where the guy has the earth on his shoulders? And mm -hmm. kind of like, that's what I was thinking right here with this. This is doing a nice arabesque right here. And this opens it up. Exactly. And this changes the charge. She's got all this weight right here. And then here's this opening. So then you can go into the next painting like that. And then keep this all Yeah, set. that makes that worked for me. And you might even bring this curve here down to this line. So now you have this open space, a small open space that might be coming in right where the side of your head is. Okay. Here. And maybe the top of your shoulder. So yeah, you feel the weight of, of this on your shoulders. But using this angle here, we come up, bring that curve here, and then maybe like we bring that curve down here. That way now, now when you're going in here, you're moving up, not, not down, right? Because you're moving to the path of least resistance, which is here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, now visually that's saying, hey, yeah, you're gonna, there's parts of your life where you're going to have this straight pressure. You're going to feel stuck, you know, where you can't move. You know, mm -hmm. you're in here. This is what's happening here. But there's hope, you know, and... Mm -hmm. And you might put something, a, a value shift, a color, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is over here. The design is allowing us to escape from that pressure and get some sense of freedom, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's freedom over here, even though you might feel pressure today. This, to me, is sellable because now this is an uplifting piece. Sure, you feel okay. pressure, but there's always <laughs> the, the other charge, right? This yeah. hope. Yeah. Thank you. Now... Um, so it sounds like picking this particular grid was an okay choice. Um, Cause that's where I'm kind of stuck is, you know, am I choosing the right grids? And well, I got a question for that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you planning on taking these images and going to a canvas that's already built or are you planning it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's You're doing them all in squares, right? Uh, possibly. I, I, you made me think that uh, I want to do whatever the piece needs. Mm -hmm. but I do want to. I do want to buy ready-made. I don't want to stretch my own canvas. And if that's the case, you probably want to go with inside of a square. Okay. But well, I have thirty-inch square canvases already, and I've got some smaller ones too, but. I like to think about 30 inch. All right. So when you have in your thrust map, a dominant vertical and horizontal and a dominant diagonal, you're going to use your dominant diagonal to determine your grid. And your dominant diagonal ultimately is, comes from the intuitive part of when you're doing your sketching and you kind of said, okay, well, this is the direction I want your eye to move in on a diagonal. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we want to honor that intuitiveness. We want to find that diagonal and then we want to, use we want to add the math to it okay so the math is let me share my screen um let me take this image here take a screenshot of it i guess that's intuitively what i did i kind of looked at my sketches and i thought 
hmm, those are angles that seem to fit because remember a couple of weeks ago I said it was amazing how my sketches naturally fit into some of these grids. Mm -hmm. There was very little adjustment. So this is the Baroque and the sinister of this rectangle, okay? The, yeah, the, I, I, I've never had the lesson on Baroque and sinister and, and drawing, the, drawing the grid. Well, I really don't teach you guys how to draw it, but now I'm starting to because um, <clears throat> if you're just using the squares, then I'm not going to get into it because they're already made for you. Um, okay. but I did figure out a way to teach you how to do it, but it's going to require you to borrow a calculator unless you're a math genius. Um, so using this Baroque and sinister of this main rectangle that's inside here, um, here's your dominant, I guess this is your dominant, um, arc that's coming through here. I mean, arc, uh, dominant diagonal. So... So that dominant diagonal mimics this grid. And it partly does because you, uh, you adjusted it and lined it on there. So I don't know what the original um, angle was. Yeah. Um, but it works. You, you've, you've modified it to work by this grid. So just keep this grid. Um, but uh, I'm trying to figure out how... Let me share my screen real quick so I can show you how it works. Um, I need to unshare this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know the answer to this, but let's just play around with this one and see what happens. Hopefully I won't look like a fool. <laughs> um, okay. So if we take, we're going to say that this, this intuitively, that's going to be the angle of the dominant diagonal, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and make it um, red here, or even white. Okay, now I want grids. That's for Donna. Eh, come on. Too many things open. Okay. So now this is this is called our gauge. And our gauge, you want to print on a piece of transparency. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Reason why is because once you determine your diagonal, your dominant diagonal, you want to find gauge line that works the best for it. Now, here's one diagonal, okay? That is the sinister. That's the same diagonal, but that is the Baroque. Same line, okay. just flipped, okay? okay? Now, when you take that and you flip it to a portrait orientation, I mean, a landscape instead of a portrait, now it gives you your reciprocal, which is a reciprocal Baroque, and that is a, a reciprocal diagonal, okay? One line, four different directions. Reciprocal sinister, you mean? or S Sinister, yes, sorry. Um, it's actually kind of cool. I was working with Katia on translating my, my lectures and stuff into Portuguese. And when she looked at the word sinister, she's like, oh, wait, I think that means left in Italian. And we looked it up, and that's where it is. It means left. So the angle that's coming from the left in Italian is sinister, centaur or whatever is interior. So, um, so one line flipped in four different directions. This is why we use this system because that gives you harmony, unity, variety, balance, all kinds of this stuff that we want in design. 
on one line. Now, every rectangle has a square, and so here's a 45. And so we have a horizontal, a vertical, and two 45 degree angles with Baroque and a sinister, plus we have the four lines that one of these diagonals gives us, which gives us eight lines in our armature, which is our grid, okay? Using, um, there's an infinite number of angles you can use. Typically we say 360 angles in a circle. So a master designer will use only five to seven angles in their drawing, okay? So, <coughs> what was that? What was that? Someone say something? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so what we wanna do here is find, we're gonna use a Baroque, I mean a sinister uh, diagonal. What we want to do is from the top left to the bottom right. Yeah. Yeah. And basically what we want to do is find the one that it closest relate the closest close closest relation to it. So in this case we're either looking at a root five or a root four. Okay. Let me see. Now, the reason why I don't know, and it's not accurate, is because I just intuitively threw a line in there, okay? So now we have to get a little more, um, <clears throat> just have to start looking around a little bit here to see which one it will be. So we start looking for a sharp edge somewhere. Um, let's see here. Uh, maybe in that nose. I think intuitively, I think she's a root five. Yeah, I'm thinking she is too, because normally a root five is used for a standing portrait. And even though this is a, um, well, let's just, let's try it. <coughs> um, so now what we want to do, so in, in this case, once you have that diagonal and you say, okay, the one that it comes closest to is in this, you know, I'm not sure, Susan, it looks like it's very close to that root four. But, but, um, but it could definitely be the root five too. Uh, mm. oh, it might be four. That's a tricky one. Uh, it might be a root five Where two. do you see the numbers? Is it down right the here. there? They're, they're right in the center. Uh, uh, because I noticed, um, your individual grids don't have the numbers on them. They have the little animal signs. Okay. So this helps you guys understand it because the num using the numbers gets a little confusing in the beginning. Um, because when I go through it, I'll say a square, a root phi, a root two, 1.5, a phi, a three, a four, and a five. And they, you know, half of them sound exactly the same. So calling it a snail turtle cat, <laughs> bear, wolf, deer, horse, cheetah, it's a little easier. Um, so let's just say it's a root five, okay? So what we want to do is come back to our grid and come over to the root five. Come on. <clears throat> All right, let's go here. Now, in terms of the square grids, you're going to, if you're going to use a square, and all you're going to do is find the one that comes closest to your dom dominant diagonal. And then that's the grid you're gonna use. So here your square. So if it's a root five, you're gonna use this one here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. I saw you actually kind of seem like when you were doing your four crop quadrant. Okay, so if we bring this in here, let's see. And just see what happens. So this is where you get a, uh, where you have to experiment, and, and I don't like doing this on the fly 
because sometimes it takes you a little while to discover what they did. And because they're masters, sometimes it's just not an easy, like, oh, it's that one grid. Sometimes they're using multiple ones, overlaying them. Um, and uh, and so you kind of have to be careful with that. But let's just... But I'm, I'm imagining I have my sketch, not a full-blown painting. And then I... I look for a grid that that lends itself to that. Oh, you doubled her. Oh. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, my gut's telling me that this is not what's happening in this one. Um, hold on one second. Let's flip it. Yeah, there, that's a lot better. <coughs> now, the question is, is, does he overlay it here? Yeah, there it is. You see that mouth landing right on that line? Let's see here. We come back up through here. So that's what it is. It's one root five, another root five, and then let's see what happens if we bring it up here. Hmm. See, that could work. It could be three root fives on top of each other. This painting could be cut short, or it's a li he overlapped it. And why would he overlap it? My guess is this. The distance from here to here, let's see if it works on the magic. I could be wrong, but let's see. Boom. Nope. That little drop down, locking that root five down, gives us the exact measurement of space that we need to go from the mouth to the eyes, which is that whole, the whole, the whole piece is hinged on, right? Coming into the eyes, drop into the mouth. Where did he get that measurement? From that space that's created by the two overlapping root fives. And then the rest of the image locks right in. Her hand, look at even like how this comes up, the chair is designed right on that. That arm is designed right on that. Ah, look at this chair over here, designed. You see how the chair ends here? Right. Comes up through here, and then the vertical of that chair comes right from that point up. Then we come across, mimic through. Bam! Horizontal coming straight up. It's all there. Yeah. <laughs> Only you could figure this out. This is brilliant. Yeah. No, you guys can too. <laughs> you, you think the project use this grid? You tell me. Of, I mean, I could literally take my heart picture and break it off into two roots then. You tell me, how does he, we land, we, we, we look for the dominant diagonal, we determine it's a root five. There we, it is. We put it on it, and boom, what's dead center? That locket. Yeah, one of the, that locket, which is probably one of the dominant, uh, the, one of the higher contrast. Pit. And this is nice because she's not put center, right? No. The, the that, center that line is here. That right eye lands right on that that line. Boom. Yeah, look at there. There she is. Boom. You tell me that's not intentional? Shit. <laughs> that was look, at, look at that neck right there. Bam. Donna needed to see this one. Yeah. Oh, it's all recorded. Oh look, at, look, look at this. If we mimic look, that. Look at her knee. It's right on that, you know. That whole area has been. So then this is where the echo map comes into place. Is once you see these things, now you can just start echoing it out. Look at the, the diagonal of this value shift, right? Yeah. The same as that root five. I mean, that uh, 45 degree angle. So um, <clears throat> just starts giving you all the information that you need. Are you seeing it, Cheryl? Uh, I am seeing it. Uh, I'm not sure I'm getting it entirely. I mean, seeing it, she's not believing it. <laughs> oh, I believe it. I believe it. It's just um, I'm asking myself now, how in the heck do I do it? You know, I'm thinking when I hang up today, what, what the heck? What am I going to do? <laughs> well, I think my homework, let me just answer my own question. Uh, my homework is to go back again um, and do line drawings 
on the, the bread. And uh, I, I can see also I need to think about my story even more. Uh, part of my problem has been from the beginning, knowing what um, gesture I want my figures to express, but right. not having them in context or in environment. And I'm still uh, stuck in that space where I'm not clear about the environment or the context and the, and be, because they're going to be abstracted anyway. So <laughs> I, I have faith that all I need are the shapes and the, the shapes and the value and blah, blah, blah around them to convey because I'm not interested in trees and teapots and things like that necessarily. Does that make sense? Did I, did I answer my own question accurately? Yeah, you got to start with the story and then start playing around. So um, I think you're in a good place. You know, right now, I, I, what I want you to do is kind of get out of the value mode. Yeah. Think in terms of line because your line is what locks you into your grid. So you got your story. Now just get, get that line drawing. <coughs> then you can move into the space, which is the grid work, which is where you're at. But if you're just doing it with the value thing that you have, that gets confusing because the values bring a whole nother, all kinds of other issues that you have to manage and we're not ready there yet. So right now, you know, it's kind of like having a baby and buying a baby a car. It's like, well, it's not even 15, you know, it's not even 16. It's just, it's like two days old, you know? It needs a bottle, you know, not not a, not a automobile. So you're just not forget about values that comes in a week or so. Just get, okay. get your design that you have converted to a line art, and sure, you might actually have a um, an app that will convert that image into line art, and then you can take that and lay it over your grid and start drawing it out mm -hmm. okay so it, it may not even be a lot of work in that sense you, your computer might do a lot of it for you and that's totally fine okay okay yeah i, I gotta i want to do a little homework to see how i can get share my uh active screen my sketch up screen uh, for next week see if that's possible I might have to start playing with a whole new app. You want a screenshot of that? What is that noise? That's somebody. Like somebody's moving noise. furniture. Okay, here we are. Here's a screenshot for you. That just... was amazing. I just, I'm just. It reminds me of Cheryl's work that we just yeah. saw. Like, yeah, right. So much going on yeah. there. It's just like spitting image almost. Yeah, there's some similarities. Let's see here. Um, and where is my stroke tool? And my opacita layers. No, transform. Transparency is what I'm looking for. That was actually a good segue, though, going through a, one of someone else's paintings and then we go into ours. Kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was, yeah. I I was really hooked. <coughs> pictures. This was one that I just I um, put on my own Facebook page because I loved it so much. There was so much going on in the picture. I'm like, wow, I'd love to see this gridded out. And I had no clue how it would. But when you started doing your, your root, it's like, gosh, that looks like a root five. I, I mean. Good call. I mean, look at this beautiful thing. I mean, um, mm -hmm. even the arc, yes. you know, where it starts and oops, where it starts and ends. You know, that's what I said you know, and you can articulate why a line begins and why it ends. I mean, look at this one coming through here, and then we come through here.
goes right there. I mean, all of these little points are right there. <coughs> Even down. Even all here, the boom, ones. boom. From this point, where are we going to go? Here. Boom. I mean, this is this is what the line art is. This is what I'm talking about by we need line art. And then we're locking all that into the grid. And then you can come back and add. If you have a line here and here, you can come back and kind of curve that little edge. You know, if it's a little hard, you can curve that little edge. And look how graceful that looks now. And yet 98% of it's straight line. Remember those little points that she was talking about right at the, um, in the chair. Um, yeah, right here. Yeah, they're locked right in mm -hmm. on that line to, and then this one, even though it doesn't show it, it does come from here. It just comes look at, all look at the space between this red here and that red. It creates an invisible thrust. Yes. But that comes from here to here, right through there. Bam. Wow. Come up through here. Uh, there's that angle. There's that angle. Oh, it's probably a little more vertical. Are you repeating that angle here? I mean, it's – and when you're – I mean, look at this angle here and, and right there inside that sh that shadow. But see how this part lines up with this part, which lines up with her head. That, and if you go up, it goes right to the tip of that forehead right there. So yep. there's that forehead. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but right there, this whole thing just lines all the way up, all the way from that top of that forehead all the way down. Even the side of her, her mouth is right on that center. Yeah, look at that, that little, oh, wow. Right here and on the other side. Look at that little, oh, um, right, on. right here, too. A little smirk. Yep, the smirk on both sides, they line up perfectly. Hmm. What I like about this smirk is you see the diagonal of that neck? Boom. Yes. <coughs> uh, lined up. Even the dress right here, it lines right up on that line. Right here, lines right up on that line. Now, what's also nice is if we draw a box here, you can see how she's shifting that hip up, right? Yes, yes. And then we put a box up through here. And now we could feel her heart that shift you know she's kind of like shifting in her seat you know? Ooh. yeah sergeant you're making me a little uncomfortable don't don't paint me like that sir <laughs> <laughs> that nice thigh coming through so this is this is the stuff that bridgman talks about who was uh norman rockwell's teacher um, blocking in these shapes like this. And then you come back and you bring in your curves and now you have this beautiful uh, arabesque that flows through her. Oh, there's the arabesque. Making, making you feel that, ooh, la la, you know. <laughs> then he repeats. <laughs> Wait, don't you laughing at me? Oh, that's, that's, the name of the painting. Huh? that's the name of the painting, right? It says la la or something? Uh, lady, lady, lady something. Agnew? Lady Agnew. Oh, this on the right over here says so y'all not. She looks sexier now with all your white lines than she did before, I think. Yeah. There it is. I mean, she's twisting and turning, and she's all over the place, all over that chair. Yeah, she's working every... Everything. <laughs> she's working it. And she's yet... And that's what the design is telling us, right? I mean, the design is like, she's, she's, she's hot and ready to drop. That must have been a but then he cloaks her in this, in low values, in clothes. So to the, rep, to the eye, oh, she's just a lady sitting on a chair, a really pretty lady sitting on a chair. But when you can read the book, there's a very, very, very nice story going on. And, um, you know, it's... That's what we call visual literacy when you can read it. I mean, look yeah. at that. Look at that, that line coming straight through there, separating yeah. her from that track. I mean, it, it, and then right through the sash. And, you know, you take it away. You don't even see all these relationships. But when you, when you reveal it, it's just it's like, oh, my God. That's cool. That is that cool. Helps well, what you did with this um, grid, one of the things 
like learning points in this. You've got the grid, but you also aren't locked into it on its face value. I mean, overlapping it is an option that I would have never thought was an option. Well, there's a lot. I'm just trying to get you to the basic principles of it so you can get comfortable with it. And okay. then we can um, see this. The greatest tool that I have, which confuses most people, except for Martin, is the matrix. See, the matrix gives you everything. Yes, that's one thing I did for <clears throat> my picture was drop in the matrix to get the size right. <clears throat> and that was and the, my cheat sheet. And the matrix breaks you out of just working with inside this. No, this is going to give you a lot of information. And this right. is a great place to start because it just gives you, you know, big areas of, to work with, your eight diagonals. Um, but then mm -hmm. when you want real freedom and you also want, see, this is, if I, if I come over four blocks and I come down four, that gives me that do dominant diagonal, right? Mm -hmm. that, not dominant, that, that, that main diagonal, Baroque and Sinister. So that is, in this case, it's a root uh, phi, phi rectangle, golden section rectangle. <coughs> but with the matrix, I can make it like this. Now, that's not a phi rectangle. But you can see that it comes up four and goes across whatever that number is. And... Um, and that becomes a very beautiful rectangle that possesses the nature of the phi. And is that, that's what I did because I couldn't, you know, just drop in that other, well, I did it, So this is where I wanted people to start so that they could create a rectangle that really related to their artwork. But I, I'm learning that this is just a little too advanced for right now because there's so much to learn. So, so right now, a good place to start is start with a solo or start with a square. Okay? The squares are nice because you can just go to the store and buy a square. Okay? The solos are nice because it just allows you to kind of really manage your layout and it gives you a pleasing rectangle to work with. Um, the matrix allows you to get really fine detail because it gives you all the calculations and it allows your field, which is the outside of your image, to be whatever shape it needs to be. Okay? Um, and so ultimately, this is where you really want to be if you want to be designing at a, at a very, very high, high level. Now, I'll show you one last thing before letting you guys go here. Um, there is a book out there called... Um, Dynamic Symmetry. All right, so let's see if I can find it here. <clears throat> yeah, I just got that. Okay. And you can just look it up. It's called Dynamic Symmetry by Jay Hambridge. And it breaks all this stuff down for you. Um, but because you can see all the math that's involved, it's very complicated for artists to get it. But you guys could probably read it and, and begin to really understand it because of the stuff we go through here. Um, What's the author's name? Jay Hamburg? Hambridge. Hambridge. Without, well, Hambridge, without the R. The elements. Now, he used to create a journal back in the day called The Diagonal. <laughs> it was all about design and, and things like that. And he basically discovered this stuff because he started studying Greece face, uh, Greece, uh, the, uh, Greek vases. <coughs> he started um, learning about how they designed these vases. Um, and so you'll learn about the root two and root four and these rectangles. But what I wanted to show you is down near the bottom – he starts to play with different strategies of combining rectangles. Um, let me get down here further. So here, you're doing a square, square, two root fives on top of each other. I don't know what that is here. Um, but here, 
Victor, um, when you do your little, you know, going back to what Michelle, how she's always putting the grids on her paintings before she starts now. Mm -hmm. And she has, she has one method that she used that you taught her with uh, a uh, business card. Oh, yeah. I used that at the museum. And you know, I haven't seen you do that. And is that something that works with all of the roots or just one? Um, what, what do you mean by... Um, because the thing that I know what I do with a business card, I'm not sure is, is what you're talking about. I know what Susan's talking about, but explain to me real quick. Um, I can't what, remember. That's the thing I keep trying to. But she, uh, I think, started out by uh, doing corner to corner diagonal lines and then getting a... Um, using the edge of the business card on one of the diagonals to form a new diagonal. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and I keep thinking, you know, with some of the paintings and things that I've already started that aren't working, I thought, you know, if I could even try to critique my own work by looking at some, you know, putting a grid over them, it would be really helpful to me. Or even starting with a grid on my, you know, I'm going to have to draw a grid on my canvas. How do I do that? And if that's the simplest way, but it doesn't, when I look at the grids that you want, um, I can't figure out how to do it because there isn't always that. All right, so let me show you how that's done. Uh, I'm not going to show you about the business card way. I'm just going to show you how it's done, and you can figure out whatever you want with it. Um, okay. Business card was just a very simple tool to give you a right edge that you always had in your pocket. Oh, that okay. I used to go to the museums and find. Now, that is something different, um, Susan. So what I want to stay focused on is how to construct the armature, not how to use the business card to analyze a work of art. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, and but, you're losing your voice. I know we need to let you go, but I'd really appreciate learning the steps if I could before we leave. Before we go, uh, before we move on to that, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So these are different ways, different strategies on how to combine rectangles. So, for example, this one down here is golden section rectangle, which is the whirling square, squares. So if you take a whirling square or a wolf rectangle, put it next to a snail, which is your squares, then you put two smaller whirling squares on top. So all of these are just squares and whirling square, square um, combinations, okay? Oh, this is a root okay. fives, two squares and two root fives next to each other. So that... that and in each of these, you can, you can already begin to see just because of the spacing that it takes up, they each have their own charge, right? So these might be yeah. two positives, two negatives. And so you would use that to help tell your story. You know, if you're trying to, you see this square here and this root five here? Let's say you're talking, to, you're trying to do a story about someone breaking through to the other side, right? They got to get in here. And so you yeah. really put a lot of emphasis on the pressure of getting into this little sacred space. Boom, mm -hmm. it does that, right? Imagine mm -hmm. this one, like, which direction do I have to go? You know, all of these are different possible options, and yet you have to make a choice. You know, mm -hmm. this is kind of cool. Yeah, you broke through one side, you know, you won the battle, but did you win the war? You know, mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, I made that decision, I now I'm in here. But was it the right decision or the wrong decision? You can begin to see how just the spacing walks you through these different stories. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is kind of cool. Mom, dad, kid, whatever, right? I mean, there's like a neat little dissension down here. Uh, this is a stacking type of dissension. Um, and so there's just different ways that you can. Uh, and I always come back to the story. So that, that's, that's how I would look at those on, on how to determine. All right, so how do we construct a rectangle? <clears throat> uh, Karen, 
Um, the meetings that we have sometimes get deep like this one, so you were really, really lucky to fall into one of these today. Um, don't get used to it. Uh, <laughs> we're being spoiled today. <laughs> um, but my head is spinning, just so you know. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> um, and, and we're just scratching the surface on this stuff. I mean, there's, this is the part that blows my mind. I've been in this thing for 25 years. I'm still learning new things. <clears throat> I look at the, the Jay Hamburg book, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding things I didn't understand before, right? Uh, I tell people, you know, I'm going to – I invented the matrix squares, but I don't know all of the technology that it possesses. I just know, you know, as long as it, 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 it makes sense in terms of it, there's an intelligent, uh, there's an intelligence behind it, and uh, it makes logical sense in terms of how we come up with the rectangle that we're going to use. You know, this goes from this point here, and it can land on any of these other points. That makes logical sense. You can, you know, but... I, there's a lot of it that I just, I'm not smart enough to understand, but it doesn't mean we can't use it. So, and, and what blows my mind is you, you ladies have been in this for a few months. Myron, uh, Myron, uh, Martin, almost a year and a half now, right? I've been at it for 25 years and, and there's still so much more to learn and discover with it and you go to art college and they might spend a day or two on quote unquote college. Right. or not at all or not at all and it just blows your mind it's like what the hell <clears throat> so what i find interesting is that like you said, there's those are the magic that happens if you base your designs on these different grids and whatnot. And so the viewer reacts to that magic, not understanding why they're reacting to that. So what, does that mean that our brains then are set up mathematically to view things in that way? I mean, is, is that the way the world is made up? That we, you know, view, that we are able to understand the magic without knowing why we understand the magic? So that, that it makes sense, but don't use the word understand because the people don't understand it, but they're experiencing it. Okay? They understand it on some type of level, though, if they're yeah. able to react to it. If... Maybe understand is the word, wrong word to use. But. It, it, it is the wrong word, but they do experience it. They feel it, right? They experience it. Maybe feeling is the wrong word, but they do experience it. So if I rub my belly button and I rub my armpit, and I rub, uh, you know, let's say uh, the top of my head, I'm going to have different experiences. I don't understand scientifically why the heck I feel different, right? And you could take the time and learn it, but the reality is I feel different, right? So, <coughs> um One of the things is, is, you know, we live in this information world, this information age, and, and people are like, oh, you know, we're having too much information. The reality is that our brains are set up to be information, information sponges, right? So if you, this is why we feel so pe at peace in nature, because in nature, it is jam-packed with so much information. You think about one tree, and, the, and you take a leaf of a tree, and you hold it up, it takes the same shape as the tree, right? There's so much math, and uh, what is that noise? It sounds like a demon. Oh, I, it was, I think it was, hold on. Oh, it was, oh, okay. Um... <laughs> so there's so much information around us and our minds are, they, it wants information. It knows how to handle it. Um, what we're doing with the grids in terms of our artwork is we're bringing order to that information. 
And that's where we, we trigger that, that level of harmony and peace. Okay, there's a concept at the academy we call the chirping and the howling, Karen. And basically, the concept is this. <clears throat> if inside this, um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, we're going to have three <clears throat> random boxes, okay? Um, how do I want to do this? Come on. Okay. Now I'm going to take those same rectangles. Let me. Um, we only see the book. Yeah, that's what, that's what's showing up as the book. Oh, okay. Very well then. That's okay. Um, give me one second. Let me set this up for you for us first. All right, cool. Uh, okay. All right, center it. Okay, bring it down here. And then I'm going to... I only see the book of yeah I know I, I, I'm trying to get something done here real quick before I show oh. you my screen uh, okay <clears throat> okay all right so let me share my screen here Stop, share. All right, somebody's sketching. Oh, it stopped. Okay, so Karen, we have three. We have two. Uh, uh two two diagrams here. Okay, <laughs> which one? feels a little more pleasing to you than the other the right one the right one. Oh man look how qu quick you say that right so this is one thing i love about the meetups is that we get consensus very very quick now i'm sure everybody will choose the right one except for uh cheryl um, no, i didn't choose the left one <laughs> nope i choose the right one. Oh my goodness gracious cool very cool <laughs> So there's yeah, always you, there's always one person in the group. Well, I just like and you're start, and you're surprising me, so it works out really well. <laughs> um, I did like the left one. <laughs> so it's fine, it's fine. But you're also the one, Cheryl, who likes the coyotes and the wolves. So I remember that. Not not Cheryl. Um, um Susan. Yes. Uh, so this is this goes back to that. Okay, so um. What happens is this, we have a mark that's being made here at the top of that box, but our eye doesn't only look at the mark, that's the conscious representation of that line. The subconscious, invisible reality of that line, or the inertia of it, if you will, is, oh, come on, what the hell? Give me a line. There we are. All right, let's uh, thicken that puppy. Uh, oh, I see what's happening. Okay, that works. Now, let's make it a little thicker. And let's dot it up a little bit. And let's say 12. And 12. Okay. Now. And I want to... Give it a different. Okay. So, can you guys see the line? Yeah. So, what happens is wherever there's a mark, the line will continue. 
And so when we bring the lines down, we start revealing really what's going on in this image, what we're actually picking up, which isn't the part that we see, it's the part that we feel, which is the invisible reality of what's going on in this image. This is what we're feeling. All of these lines are crashing into each other. Okay. And then we have one here. Okay. Now over here, let's apply the same exact principle. This is why we call it technology, right? It's the same exact principle. So one. <clears throat> Bottom one on that one. How rude. It's trying to hide. <clears throat> now it's complete. If we shift one of those rectangles, it shifts the, this invisible reality that's going on in, in it. And you can see that on the right, no line goes through the mass, but on the left, it constantly does, right? Um, and so one has order and one is more chaotic. Now, they're both acceptable, but one we call the chirping and one we call the howling. And the reason why we call it that is because in nature, when we hear chirping birds, let me ask you, Karen, when you hear chirping birds, does that put, how does that make you feel? Depends on the bird. <laughs> <laughs> a chirping a bird, not a parrot, <laughs> a screeching bird. <laughs> yeah, not, not cowbirds that like to hang out in my tree. Um, you know, the springtime growth, you know, relaxing, pretty. One of the reasons why scientists say that most people really, really enjoy uh, that they have a sense of peace when they hear birds is because when you're hearing birds, that means there's no predator in the environment. Uh -huh. uh, kind of neat, right? So this is why we call it a chirping. It's like the information is there. It's, it's broadcasting a sound. Even if you don't want it to, your image broadcasts. So we're designing images that broadcast with intention and clarity in order so that when you look at it your mind which it's calculating all of these mathematical equations at, at, at such a rapid speed it just feels right when it's looking at the relationships of space and lines and directions and all this stuff because we've been intentional about the entire process it just feels right now that doesn't mean that the person is going to necessarily, quote unquote, like the painting because there's also taste that's involved and things like that. But as, as an image itself, it's, it either works or it doesn't. Um, you know, they might, they might like paintings of war, you know, <laughs> not of, of flowers. And that's just their personal taste. But both of them can be master, masterfully composed and designed and effective. So the one on the left, all of these lines are running into each other. It's chaotic. It's banging into each other. And, and so it makes you feel a less, a, a less uneasy. It makes you feel um, there's more tension in that environment. And so this is what we call the howling because if you heard a wolf out your back window, oh, that's a sick wolf who can't howl. Um, <clears throat> Right, I do like the coyotes. <laughs> exactly. You know, if, if you heard a wolf howling, Karen, how would you feel? Uh, like you said, a little uneasy. <laughs> exactly. And so this is what we want to be mindful of with our images. Um, and, and I don't know the science behind it. I just know that our minds work at these super fast rates. And uh, it's like when we were at the gallery the other day, and I had, you know, I was explaining about the jumping, you know. You're jumping from one place to another. The amount of calculations that, that, that's required in that thing, it's insane. Um, 
and yet we do it like that. Um, and so we want our, our artwork to work at that level as well, so that people, when they come into the gallery, it needs to be able to carry, it needs to feel harmonized, it needs to, it needs to work. And the grids help us with that. <clears throat> the line strategies that we use help us with that. Our value strategies help us with that. So that's, that's how that works. Um, now, when we're, sure, when we're dealing with a rectangle and dividing it up, we have a, a, a thing at the academy called the box and the X, okay? So this is going to be very, very difficult. If I make a box and I put an X inside of it, that's all we need to know, okay? That's, that's all the information that we need to create the grids, okay? So I want to quickly break this down. If I take this and I get the measurement, hold on, the measurement that we're going to be using for all of this, okay, is the shortest width, the shortest distance, okay, which in this case is the width, okay? So if I come and I take that width and I come down and I draw a box with an X in it, we have a square, right? The top and the, the, the height and the width are exactly the same. So what we're going to be looking for is five rectangles with a box, uh, five boxes with an X inside of it, okay? So we have the mother with a main, and now we're going to have a, um, a square, and we're also going to have one come from this side too, okay? Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the other rectangle that we need to find is this. We're going to take, it's going to be called the daughter or the reciprocal. We're going to take this main rectangle. If in this case it's a portrait, we're going to make it a landscape. Hold on. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shrink it down so that the new width, the long side, is the same as the short side of it of the long of, of the main rectangle. And we're going to do one at two uh, uh, on each side of the, of the uh, of the of the rectangle. Okay, so that's it. Make a box, put an X in it. Take the short side, bring it down, find your square, put an X in those. The reciprocal gets a little tricky because this is where I was saying about using a business card. So if you have a business card. Oh, come on. What happened here? Okay. If you have a business card, what you what you can do? Oh, come on, damn it! Okay, the business card gives you. <clears throat> Or you can use a right triangle. It just gives you the ability to put a, a straight edge and gives you a 90, 90 degree angle. That way you can draw that line and see what happens here. That's what, what you're really getting is that line. Okay. So let me bring this over so you can see what, what we're doing here. So, 
see how that gives you that 95 degree angle there? So a little card or 90 uh, or right triangle or something will give you that. So if you take this Baroque and you make it here and you come and you lay it on this, I mean the sinister point here, you lay it on this Baroque, it, that new angle gives you uh, your reciprocal. Now there's also another way of figuring it out, okay? Victor, can you, oh, I was gonna say a screenshot of that would be so helpful because I've tried to remember and remember that. And I, All right. That gives, that gives me the real, uh, ratio of that shrunk down rectangle, right? Yeah. It, it gives me the angle. That, that's the step that I just can never quite get. All right, so let's do this. Let's pretend this is a, a um, let's say this is uh, 30 inches across, okay? And let's say that the rectangle, we're gonna use a bear rectangle, bear grid. <clears throat> and a bear grid is a 1.5, rectangle, meaning if you take a square and you duplicate it, uh, actually this is probably closer to the, the wolf, which would be a 6, 1.8, okay? That's your golden section ratio. This is the 1.5, it's a different ratio. So in the community under the, the a AOC glossary, if you go under the space terms, let me show you so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I have the formulas there for you. I put them in the other day for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if we go under space, you can see here, uh, box okay. box in the X refers to the rectangle and its two main, uh, two main sinister and Baroque diagonals, okay? Uh, so if we look at the cat grid, it says this grid is a root two rectangle, which means it is a 1.4142 times longer than its shorter side. Okay, area of the main root two is fully occupied by two equal mini root two uh, uh, root two rectangles, and this is the important part to determine the armature. Now the armature is the grid that you see. Okay. To determine the armature of this grid, simply find these three areas, okay? The main rectangle, multiply the length of the shorter side by 1.4142, okay? Take that short side and divide it by 1.4142, and that'll give you the, the reciprocal. And then to find the rebated square, you just make the height the same as the, as the width. Okay, so on all these grids, the cheetah is a different formula. It's a 2.236. Um, and if you go down the wolf, which is the 1.618, again, you multiply and you divide it. So let me, uh, let's use a root four, because a root four is just uh, the number two. So let me see here. And I, I really don't like <clears throat> getting in all, to, in all this math, but it's just something. I like the business card model. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do something totally different, but I, it still gets to the same without doing any math. It's helpful to have that, though. I mean, math doesn't frighten me, but... So let's look at the deer grid because that's a really simple one, okay? Because the deer grid, it's really two squares. So whatever it is high, it's just twice its width um, wide, okay? So let's, let me so go back. Like a nine by 12. I mean, does it matter what size your cabinet is? It would, wouldn't it? Yes. A nine by 12. If you took, yeah, see, that's not even a 1.5. Now, what's nice about a 9 by 12 is you can actually have 
a root five at the bottom, and then I think it's a root phi rectangle at the top, which is very interesting. And that's what Michelle uses for a lot of her images. Yeah. I guess, you know, that was my orientation <clears throat> and how I met you, and so I'm still locked on to. So here, let's let's say this is uh, 30 across, okay? And we're going to use a root uh, four rectangle, which is the deer rectangle, the deer grid. Ah, come on. Okay, so if this is 30 and this is a root four rectangle, how long is this rectangle? If the root four, we just have to multiply the, the small side by two. 60. Oh my gosh, we're mathematicians. I'm brilliant. <laughs> okay, so that's good. 60. Now, if we need to find the reciprocal, and the reciprocal is to take the, the shorter side and, and divide it by two, what is that going to give us? 15. 15. So we come down 15 inches, and that gives us a box. And what do you put inside every box? A uh, X. That's it. Boom. You're done. Now you have it. So if you need to draw it by hand, whatever you find that width that you want your smallest side to be. So let's say you're doing a, a 16 by 20-ish type of picture. So let's say 16 is your smallest width, right? I mean, your smallest uh, length. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to do a root four rectangle. It'll be 32 long. And it will be eight inches in will be where your reciprocal is. Oh boy, you lost me there. If I have a 16 by 20 canvas. No, no, I said, let's say that's the size, the kind of area that you want it to be creating in. 16 okay. by 20? Yeah. So now let's we look at 16, and we multiply yeah. it by 2 if you want yeah. to do a root 4 rectangle. So how long is your picture going to be? 32. Yeah, so it's going to be 16 by 32, right? Now, that's going to give you your main rectangle. Let's find your rebated squares. How far from the right or from the left coming in, are you going to come in? How many inches? Would it be eight? Nope. We want to find a square. Oh, uh, 16? Yep, 16. <clears throat> okay. And then once you have those two, once you have that square, what do you put inside the square? The, uh, the, the diagonal. X. Yep, that's it. Boom. Okay. So it's going to take some practice. Yep. Or, or, you, or you just print out the grids. Yeah, yeah. that's what I did. Um, now, yeah, and so now, now let's look up at the reciprocal. If the shorter side is 16 and we divide it by 2, what will that give us? I guess where I've lost is you've got two things you got me trying to think of two things simultaneously i'm i'm thinking of a canvas size that i want to compose in the, on that canvas and as opposed to a design space within that canvas or something so i thought right. the grid i thought the grid was supposed to be the same um, uh, so what size do you want to do it in uh, let's say let's say 16 by 20 and that would be true 8 by 10 or 32 by 40 right the proportion would all be the same 8 by 10 so, yeah or, uh, 24 or, by 30 yep so we could do 16 by 20 or 18 by 24 any of those all right so um, let me think here. <clears throat> so we, if, if we know that 10 is its width and 8 is its height, well, we already know where the uh, rebated squares are going to be, right? So let's say we're doing a, a 16 by 20, okay? Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we know the main rectangle is 16 by 20. That means the rebated square is going to be what? Each square is going to be what? 16. 16. <clears throat> now, what we have to do now is we have to find a ratio of 16 by 20. So I don't know what that is. I have to get a calculator. Okay. So this is, this at least makes me feel like I'm not an idiot because it wasn't that obvious. Well, you were stuck on 16 by 20. I said, what I asked you was, what, what size do you want to play within 16 oh, no. by 20? What I, what I've been stuck on is the third step. I could do the uh, rebated square. Uh -huh. Then it's the angles off of, and I can, I can do the diagonal, and I can do the rebated square, yeah. but then every corner has like at least three angles coming off of it, yep. and it's those secondary and tertiary angles that I get confused about. Sometimes they go to the corner of the square, sometimes they go someplace else, and it determines a line. I don't know. That's where I get caught up is that step. Did that make sense? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so. Sometimes it doesn't even make sense to myself, so I would need to check in. So write this down, 1.25. 1 1.25. 16 by 20? Yeah. Okay. So what that, what that means is, um, whose who's, uh, thing is that noise? Uh, let me mute, mute some people here. Um, okay, I just muted you. How did you, how did you get to 1.25? Was it um, 16 into 20? I don't know how to put it. I just know I put 20 first, then divide, and then 16. Put the big number first. Okay. okay. Yeah. So whatever the big number is, divide it into this one. Okay, so that comes to 1.25. That means if I have 16, right, as a smallest, that's the one. And now if I have that as your base, and I take 25% or a quarter of that, which is what, four? Mm -hmm. And I add that to 16, it gives me 20. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that's the, the ratio. So if I have 16 and I divide it <clears throat> by 1.25, so 16 first and divide it by 1.25. That gives me 12.8. And that will be the ratio. That would be a reciprocal of that rectangle. So would that be, would, would I make a mark down the 20 inch line? 20 inch side? Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. go 12.8 inches down. <laughs> uh, yeah, you would go 12 point, yep. Okay. So it'd be 16 will be now the longest side, and that 12.8 uh -huh. becomes the shorter side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's the way that you can do it with the math to get precise. Another way is you can just lay a triangle or a straight edge on that major Baroque or sinister, have it come to one of the corners mm -hmm. and where it forms that 90 degree angle that, and just continue that angle straight and that'll give you um, the place in which you divide that out. Okay. okay. Well, that's, that seems like the simple way to do it. It's, it is simple if you're doing a solo grid, but when you start experimenting and you start breaking it down, yeah, you know. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm just thinking of, yeah, simple. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, this isn't really going to work necessarily for you in terms of your square grids if you're doing a square. 
So with the squares, what I would recommend you doing is figuring out what size square you want. If it's a 30 or a 36 or 18 or 20, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then ordering the, the grid paper mm -hmm. so that you can then um, put them up to scale. Okay. And then draw your image on, on that paper and then transfer it to your canvas. Okay. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out some way of creating some simpler way of, of transposing that to a canvas, but I don't really know um, how, how to do that. You could maybe – no. You'd have to do the math. You'd have to break out the calculator. Transposing the grid? Yeah. You have a digital uh, projector. Yeah, and then and, and you could do it that way if, if you have access to that. And then with that, you got to just be, you got to make sure that everything is lined up pitch perfect, nothing moves. So right. you can get that in. Um, <clears throat> Canvas has to be completely vertical as well. Yes. Yeah. Because if you tilt it on an angle, well then then those lines get skewed. Yeah. Now what we do is we lay it out and draw it on a smaller uh, piece of paper, scan it in, and then get our final drawing just printed directly on a piece of canvas. And I know when Bill does that, the people actually even stretch it to the canvas. He'll actually get his value studies printed on this canvas. So all of that work that he does, like you've done on the computer there, Cheryl, mm -hmm. you just send that off to the printer. They might charge you, you know, a couple bucks and stretch it and ship it back to you. Mm -hmm. um, some places, if you spend over $100, you get free shipping, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then what you have is you have your story, your line, your space, and your values exactly the way that you planned it. And now you can have fun painting on top of it as long as you mix the color to match your values. Yeah. I'm going to try to keep it simple along the way for now. And that's why I needed. It seems like this whole... Um, that you can do it without the math by making, if I could just repeat this, you make your diagonal lines, say you have a rectangle, any size of rectangle, you make your diagonal lines, mm -hmm. you make your reciprocal, what do you call it, the square? Mm -hmm. The rebated square. The rebated square. And then from that, um, you, you get your right angles and um, and make like to me I'm making three lines from each corner using the right angles. Mm -hmm. I think where I got tripped up where I got tripped up looking at something, I don't know what it was, was I kept thinking that one of those um, diagonal lines, like the one of them goes to one of the horizontal lines made by the square and another one doesn't you know i thought they all had to connect and stuff so that's not necessarily the case it sounds like anyway i i don't need to have you spend any more time on it at this point i think i can review our uh, tape that you're recording and it'll be a big help and then also uh, seeing the math that you posted on the website that'll help yeah I actually think that in the long run, the math is probably the quickest way because you just punch it in. It tells you how far to go down. You yeah. put the work and that's it. It just, yeah. on the surface, it seems like the more difficult one because you're like, oh, my God, i got to do the math. Um, yeah. I like the idea of running. If you're going to go from one corner and find a 90-degree angle, um, yeah. I, I would do that before bringing in your squares because that – 
will just reduce the confusion because if you bring the squares in, you put the lines in, well, now you have to figure out, oh, which line am I going to be on? It, it can cause a little confusion. So I agree with that. Yeah. I think that has caused the confusion. So thank you. Yeah, so do those last. All right, peeps. I'm gonna go uh, you, and I'm going to go sleep. Yeah, I'm impressed with how long you've been able to hold up this morning. So thank you very much. And this information I'll go back to the me. drawing board. Yeah. <laughs> I've, you know, let me just say this, Cheryl. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate your patience with it. Um, and it's funny because I, I say you guys are patient, and yet people would have to study seven years, you know, to, to learn this information back in the day. So, you know, throwing a few months in it to, to, to design a masterwork, <laughs> I think is um, pretty, pretty cool. But um, you guys are picking it up very, very fast. And I think doing the, um, I saw doing the uh, analysis in the class with the masterworks gives you context on how it all applies and it keeps that, that energy there. And, 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 and you know where you're going with it. Um, and, and so you're actually learning this stuff at a very, very rapid rate. 